Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, in this conversation, we'll be talking about uh, the, the Fukushima nuclear disaster and how this may begin to affect your Kundalini life and what the Kundalini response may be in, in, in uh, regards to uh, to that disaster. But first, I would like to welcome Amelia Centara, my co-host for these, these programs, also a sponsor of these programs. I'd like to thank you, Amelia Centara and, and John, because uh, I know John's listening. So, John, thank you. And I'd like to thank the entire uh, uh, John and Amelia clan in the in the county of Kerry in the country of Ireland. So, thank you, Amelia Santara. You are very welcome indeed. You are very welcome indeed, Chris. It's good to be here. So, if I can, at the start of the show, I'd like to do what I usually do, which is to give the web address of where listeners can go if they want to make a donation to support the work and service that Chris gives to people who are experiencing a Kundalini awakening. And that address is wwwascension hyphen kundalini.blogspot.com and I know Chris has said in the past you know that he does not do this work 24-7 but (laughs) believe me he almost does I mean he communicates with people all over the world in all the venues and the different ways that he does that and so he's active in all the time zones in order to be of service to people so okay he's correct in that he does sleep at times but in any case this is his full-time work and and due to the nature of that work and the time consumption it's his only means of income donations so if you're in a position to make a donation it's received with gratitude for the support it offers in enabling chrism to continue with this work and just to say as well that this information is being given as I feel it's necessary to give it to the listeners for those who want to donate and can but please note that there's no pressure and no obligation on anybody to do so I'm going to give you the address again it's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and that's it um, Actually, maybe I could say something as well. You know, if you have any questions about any aspect of your Kundalini awakening process or any comments or questions specific to the show, I'd really encourage you to dial in. Um, Now, because Chris is talking live and there, you'll get through to me first in the studio, and then I'll pass you through to Chris. And from feedback that I've received and, you know, from just being here every week, I know that we all love the dynamic that live phone calls bring to the show. So those of you who are maybe even considering calling in, I'd really encourage you to be brave. Pick up the phone and dial in and um, we'd be delighted to speak with you and it would be wonderful for the show. So the number that you can dial is an American number and it's 347 934-0026 934-0026 and um, I look forward to hearing from you. I'm looking forward to the show, Chris. Well, thank you. And, 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 and yeah, so, so Millie is correct. I do uh, reach out to all different time zones of the world. Not everybody sleeps at the same time and so I, I am somewhat preoccupied uh, that way. I would like to give you uh, other venues for this information and one of those venues is chrism dot kundalini at on youtube so if you go to youtube and you type in chrism dot kundalini you'll come to the videos there's almost well i think there's about 275 videos and uh, these will give you another uh, uh level of information about your kundalini awakening uh experience and so please go there you can also go to kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and that's the number one, not the spelled out word. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and I'd like to thank Glenn Ola of Australia for putting that website together. Thank you, Glenn. 
I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Eileen Loro for the many gifts and blessings that she bestows upon, uh, you know, the community of the, of the, the, as she calls it, the KAS1 community. So thank you, Eileen. Um, uh, we are looking at uh, possibly putting on a seminar in the uh, Florida area, and Eileen is integral to that. So uh, if you have any, any questions about that, then you can contact Eileen at e e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com. So that's e loro or e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com, and you can get a hold of Eileen that way and talk to her about that. Um, and so, thank you, uh, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, those of you that are tuning in via the uh, the. Uh, in the future, you know, via the the files or the the the, uh, the saved aspect of this program. So thank you for listening in the future as well. This is a somewhat of a divergent subject, but it's it's also a very important subject that we need to discuss with regards to the Kundalini and the the amazing uh, uh, environmental uh, story that's unfolding uh, in northern Japan. Fukushima, if, you know, just to catch some people up if you haven't heard about it, Fukushima, Fukushima was, was a nuclear power plant on the north uh, east coast of Japan that in 2011, um, you know, when they had a devastating earthquake and, and, and uh, tidal wave that washed over and through Japan, uh, this is that power station kind of experiencing a China syndrome meltdown, meaning the, uh, the fuel rods are kind of melting into the earth and, re and a lot of uh, radioactivity is being released into the ocean and the air and certainly in the landmass there in Japan. It's important to uh, talk about this within a Kundalini context because this is not something that, that you can ignore. Uh, not saying that the Kundalini won't help you, and of course the Kundalini will help any of her children that, that she has is activated or awakening in, but it's not going to fix this problem. Okay? People are going to have to figure out a way to fix this problem, and unfortunately, uh, people haven't, uh, here in the West at least, uh, the, the media... For the for the level and scope of the disaster that's that's occurring as we speak in Fukushima, Japan, uh, the media is pretty much shielding most of the American public from what is actually occurring, and that is unfortunate because that that well that's that's the way it is here in the United States at this moment until we choose to to change it. Let me read you a few facts right off the bat about the Fukushima plant. Um, here we go. Polar bears, seals, walruses along Alaska's coastline are suffering from fur loss and open sores. There's an epidemic of sea lion deaths along the California coastline. Along the Pacific coast of Canada and the Alaska coastline, the population of sockeye salmon is at a historic low, and many people are blaming Fukushima. Something is causing fish all along the west coast of Canada to bleed from their gills, bellies, and eyeballs, this is very similar to what people do when they come in contact with too much radiation. A vast field of radioactive debris from Fukushima that is approximately the size of California has crossed the Pacific Ocean and is starting to collide with the west coast of the United States and Canada and Mexico and uh, Ecuador and Peru and Chile. Uh, in addition to all of the islands that are that are sprinkled out there, they're all getting it as well. It's being projected that the radioactivity of coastal waters off the U.S. West Coast could double over the next five to six years. Experts have found very high levels of cesium-137 in plankton living in the waters off the, of the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the West Coast. One test in California found that 15 out of 15 bluefin tuna were contaminated with radiation from Fukushima, and they can trace that radiation back to the reactor that's leaking it. And these are in bluefin tuna, folks. Tuna fish, uh, you may want to reconsider buying any tuna fish, 
especially if you know it's it's coming from the Pacific uh, Ocean. Uh, in 2012, uh, the Vancouver Sun reported that cesium-137 was being found in very high uh, concentrations of the percentage of fish that Japan was selling to Canada. So you might be having this fish appear in your grocery stores, and, and you need to be very, very careful about eating anything from the Pacific Ocean now. Canadian authorities are finding extremely high levels of nuclear radiation in certain fish samples. Some experts believe that we could see very high levels of cancer along the West Coast just from people eating contaminated fish. So just kind of red flag that a little bit for yourself and your family. BBC News recently reported that radiation levels around Fukushima are 18 times higher than previously believed. 18 times higher. A European Union-funded study concluded that Fukushima released up to 210 quadrillion becquerels of cesium-137 into the atmosphere. A becquerel is a measurement of the amount of, of radiation uh, that's being released. It's like a, uh, another uh, measurement is called a RAD, R-A-D, and that's, uh, some of you are more familiar with that. Atmospheric radiation from Fukushima reached the west coast of the United States within a few days back in 2011. At this point, 300 tons of contaminated water is pouring into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima every single day. And then you just want to multiply that times the, the amount of days that has gone by since, since this, this disaster occurred. Um, at this point, uh, you know, a senior researcher of marine chemistry at Japan's Meteorological Agency's uh, Research Institute says 30 billion quadrillion quad, uh, becquerels of radioactive cesium and 30 billion becquerels of radioactive strontium are being released into the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima every single day. According to TEPCO, a total of somewhere between 20 trillion and 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium have gone into the Pacific Ocean since Fukushima disaster first began. Uh, and according to a uh, Tokyo University, three giga becquerels, that's G-I-G-A becquerels of cesium-137 are flowing into the port at the Fukushima Daiichi every single day. Okay? It's been estimated that up to 100 times as much nuclear radiation has been released into the ocean from Fukushima than was released during the entire Chernobyl disaster. One recent study concluded that a very large plume of cesium-137 from Fukushima disaster will start flowing into the U.S. coastal waters early next year. It is being projected that significant levels of cesium-137 will reach every corner of the Pacific Ocean by 2020. Uh, it'll, it's being projected that the Pacific Ocean will have cesium levels five to ten times higher than what we witnessed during the heavy atomic bomb test in the Pacific uh, a few decades ago. The immense amounts of nuclear radiation getting into the water in the Pacific Ocean has caused uh, enviro act act event environmental activist Joe Martino to issue the following warning. Your days of eating Pacific Ocean fish are over. I'll repeat that. Your days of eating Pacific Ocean fish are over. The iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90 that are constantly coming from Fukushima are going to affect the health of those living in the northern hemisphere for a very, very long time. According to a recent Planet InfoWars report, the California coastline is being transformed uh, to, into what some say is a dead zone. A study conducted last year came to the conclusion that radiation from Fukushima nuclear disaster could ne negatively affect human life along the west coast of North America from Mexico to Alaska for decades. According to the Wall Street Journal, it is being projected that the cleanup of Fukushima could take up to 40 years to complete. Okay. This is, a, uh, this is an issue that can, that can harm humanity for thousands of years. So I just wanted to, those are facts. Those are the facts that we know of at this point. Okay. Now, how does the Kundalini fit into this? Well, here's the deal. There are patterns of probability that certain disasters will occur if certain uh, errors within the population are allowed to flourish. 
uh, the the gluttony and the greed of the United States and and Soviet Union, China, and to some degree the European Union for cheap and easy power is really uh, the, one of the seed issues behind this disaster. And so, you know, the the, uh, the people who build these power plants and the engineers and the and the uh, the different scientists that choose a location, uh, they really have themselves to blame for these types of things because you you know you don't put a nuclear uh, reactor on a fault line like they have done in California. You, uh, one need only look as far as San Onofre down in Los Angeles area. You know that's right on the ocean, and oh, by the way, it's right on the San Andreas Fault. So we knew as we came into bodies that certain patterns of probability would occur uh, within our lifetimes uh, as we have the Kundalini. Now, yes, yes, the Kundalini will protect her children to a large degree, uh, but her children also have to come at least 50% of the way in order to incur that protection, meaning within this within this understanding is you need you don't eat fish from the pacific ocean period uh, i'm sorry to say that because you know as amelia may have have kind of described to you i don't i don't live high on the hog as they say in the southern united states i'm not living a wealthy monetary wealthy life and so when i go out and buy food i have to buy what my money will purchase and and that's just taking a real big uh chunk uh, out of the food nutrients that I can partake of uh, with regards to the Pacific Ocean, tuna, you know, tuna fish and things of that nature. And yes, this has been known for years that the that the deep water fish like tuna and, and some sharks and some uh, swordfish and, and sailfish and marlins and, and, and deep water fish of that nature, they have high levels of mercury anyway. But what this is going to do to the sushi industry and to to uh, many different uh, aquaculture industries is is going to be devastating. And uh, food resources uh, may become a bit harder to find. One thing I'm going to advise advise people to do from a Kundalini perspective is because you can't uh, really partake of the seafood to get your iodine. I'm going to suggest that you get atomidine. A T O M I D I N E, uh, and that's a, a, a oral iodine that you can, you know, you put one drop in an eight ounce glass of water and take that down, and you know, you have your iodine, and this iodine will, of course, uh, protect certain areas of your body from from radiation poisoning to a degree. It doesn't mean that you can go over into into Fukushima and, and uh, lift the uh, the nuclear rods with your hands because you had automidine that morning. I certainly don't want you to think that. Uh, but, you know, this whole disaster is going to have a very, very significant effect upon your kundalini. Uh, more energy in the air. This could be seen as a way of, of teaching humanity that the, the, the excesses of the ego, the excesses of the ego, meaning the the, the greed and the gluttony and the and the laziness and the and you know the various uh, uh, institutions that make a lot of money off of power uh, and these institutions are filled with people who enjoy making that money and you can you can understand that uh, in this in this Western society that we've grown up with here in the United States at least and Canada I might add and so these gluttonous and, and environmentally uh, poor ways of, of uh, producing energy, well, we're going to start paying for that a lot more than we would have uh, would have expected to have to pay for it. Um, for you, the, the Kundalini person, uh, begin to look at, at what it is you're consuming. Come 50% of the way. Look at what you're consuming and where it's coming from. If it's a, if it's a plant-based uh, product, look, look at who grows it. Get it as organic as you can. Even though you know, you're having a huge level of, 
of, uh, of of cesium coming in through the atmosphere in the clouds, and so you know the uh, the fresh water will be also radioactive to a much larger degree than it currently is. Even though that is occurring, you can still mitigate a lot of the effects of radio radiation poisoning by choosing where it is you get your food. Choosing where it is you get your food and how it is you get your food and and uh, you know what kind of proteins you're eating and, and things of these of this nature. If you can grow it and do it yourself, then as I've said many times in the past, then I, I would certainly suggest that you do that. Grow your food, uh, grow the the feed that you that you say if you have chickens, you know, grow your own feed so that the chickens, you know. They're not having, you know, you know, strontium-based foods or, or cesium-137-based foods, you know, given to them. Do your level best to begin to change how you consume and what you consume regarding regarding your food sources. And remember, just in these in these 28 facts that. Uh, that uh, I just spoke about, and I'll give you the uh, web address for these 28 f uh, facts. This is the, uh, it's, it's um, www.d as in dog, o as in Oscar, s as in Sam, e as in Elizabeth, dot ca, and then uh, you can just go 28 facts, uh, 28 facts proof Fukushima nuclear disaster. So, uh, yeah, www.dose. .ca, I believe that's a Canadian uh, website, and it shows this really beautiful graph of of, uh, of NOAA uh, satellite imagery of radiation that is now impacting the west coast of the United States, Canada, Alaska, Central America, and all of South America on the Pacific side. It looks like Australia is is somewhat uh, Free and clear to some degree, at least from the from the currents that are that are uh, taking the you know the currents are taking it more to the to the east than it is uh, to Australia. So Australia, Burma, uh, looks like parts of Indonesia, Borneo, uh, some of the Philippine Islands. It looks like. Um, are at this point still somewhat uh, less radioactive than other places, uh, but anyway, yeah. If you want to go to that um, to that website, I would suggest it. Uh, and you look at these 28 facts, and you begin to understand the seriousness of what has occurred. Now, of course, this was an act of God. People would say, "Well, anything on this world is an act of God." So that's that's not the best. Uh, that would not be the, the the best identification of the problem. Oh, well, it's an act of God. Everything on this world is an act of God. It's an act of grace. And the tests that we are given through these different actions of grace are what allows us to sculpt our character and, and uh, in how we respond to these disasters. Okay. You need to just respond to this disaster by acknowledging the mistakes that that we have made as a society in the past, acknowledging our our, uh, our our lust for power, you know, and instead of using sunlight or wind or or even the wave action, you know, we have chosen the easy route of of a nuclear power, which is not proving earthquake or tidal wave proof, and that that is just the the hubris of humanity. To think that uh, you know that that silly little wall that the Japanese put up, thinking that it was going to block a tidal wave, would actually do anything. Okay, the tidal wave just goes right over it. Um, putting nuclear reactors on the ocean coasts, you know, the the, the people that were that were uh, uh, marching against nuclear energy back in the 70s, these people are, have proven themselves correct. It just took a little time. That's all. Okay, so the, the you know we need to look at San Onofre. We need to look at some of these other ocean-based uh, nuclear power plants, uh, wherever they are in this world, and begin to shut them down. I'm you know I, I hate to be so uh, 
so 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 definitive about it, but they need to be closed down, and those rods need to be moved away from the coastlines. Um, this is my opinion. This is the opinion of the Kundalini within me. Uh, with, with regards to your response to this, uh, you can, and, and I know this sounds this sounds so trite and, and, and such a cliche, but for those of you that have the Kundalini, you know, you know that your prayers are heard. You know that your conversation with the Kundalini is monitored and partaken of by the Kundalini. You know this is a fact. Because the Kundalini tells you. I mean, you you have the ability to have a strong, firm level of communication with your Kundalini. This is not something that is faith based. Oh, if I if I pray enough and if I give enough money to to the church, then 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 God will speak to me. Well, you don't have to do that with Kundalini. Kundalini's there. God is there. God has put uh, God's hand upon you, His and her hand. Are upon you. You have been touched and are being touched by God. And and so your prayers are being listened to. They're being heard. And one of the things that I'm going to ask people, or I'm not going to ask you to do, I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do with it. And you can either do it or not. If you live on the West Coast, uh, and if you follow any Dr. Emoto's um, understandings with regards to his... Uh, uh, electron uh, pictures of uh, of, uh, of water and what happens to water when you pray in it or when you're thankful with it or when you're you have gratitude things like that. How that affects the 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 actual crystals of the water. Well, I would have you place your hands in the ocean or the lakes or the land wherever you are and give that water, give that earth a healing with your kundalini. Let your kundalini pour into that. If you've looked at some of the videos, you see how great a footprint a kundalini can be. So go to that YouTube uh, website, chrism.kundalini, and go to kundalini footprint. And this will give you an idea how, I mean, you know, it's almost a mile in radiance that a, an energetic footprint from an awakened kundalini person can be. And that's just, that's not the biggest one. That's just one that, you know, is a general idea to give you the concept. Okay? You can have an effect on Fukushima. Because you have Kundalini, you can have a restorative effect upon the environment that, that the uh, radiation is falling on. Okay? You Kundalini people can do this work. And I'm going to suggest that you do this work. If you'd like to call in, the, the guest call-in number is 347-934-0026. That would be a United States area code, 347-934-0026. So this, just like, you know, when I was, uh, back when I was really young, we were still doing nuclear tests in the in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of uh well, in, in various island areas, you know, the most beautiful part of, of the world, you know, the South Pacific, you know, they're they're setting off nuclear warheads. And so my karma and my choice to come in at this time uh, is not accidental. And I'm going to suggest neither is it accidental for you. You have come into this world and you've matured to the point where you – you recognize that you may have kundalini or you're seeking kundalini or you want to you have a, a greater relationship with the divine. And this is all good. This is all good. But now, now the divine is asking more of a relationship, is to extend that relationship from the divine into those many, many ecosystems that may be uh, destroyed or, or damaged by the amount of uh, nuclear radiation in in, in the water, uh, in the seawater and in the air, in the rain, in the snow, and on the land. Um, think of your kids. Think of your grandkids. Think think of the future 
populations that may benefit from the actions that you take right now as you as you blend maybe even greater than you ever have with your kundalini and you touch the earth with your bare feet and your bare hands in prayer in prayer and and gifting a healing to this land and to these waters okay you don't have to to, to live on the Pacific Ocean to have to to make this occur. You can do this. You can do, and you don't have to do it from a basis of fear. Remember, Kundalini people should typically have uh, levels of fear. You know, especially if you've gone for a few years in your process. Levels of fear are not the same as as those levels of fear when you're not awakened with the Kundalini. Um, so you don't have to come at it from a level of fear. Just come at it from a level of love. Love for the many creatures and plants and, and forms of life that are dependent on clean water, clean air, clean, you know, clean land. And restore through the grace of God within you, through the grace of the Kundalini within you, those areas. And some of you will really only need to think about it. Uh, and, 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 and try to control the, the caustic responses like, oh, well, you know, since they... They made their bed, let them sleep in it. You know, I'm I'm kundalini active. I'm just going to ascend out of here and da-da-da-da. Well, that's just not the case. Came here. You came here with with many different purposes. Uh, You're being given an opportunity to blend with your kundalini to such a degree that it allows a level of healing to occur on this world. Okay. You don't get to just back out of this because it's convenient for you or because you want to be a pessimist or any of these types of things because radioactivity doesn't care if you're a pessimist. Okay? The only one who cares that you're a pessimist is your ego. And when I say operate from love, I want you to operate from love, not from your ego, but from your love of all creation, all all, uh, corporeal creation and and, uh, and allow that love to sink into the earth and into the waters and to give a healing for this type of a situation. You know, a lot of this is from the ego, this, this idea that we, you know, and I have to, you know, I'm going to lay some of the blame straight up with the Christian faith, okay? Uh, you know, the, the, the Christian faith, which is pretty much uh, the, the, the faith that founded the United States, uh, is basically saying, oh, we are stewards of the earth. Stewards of the earth. Well, I think that stewardship has gone pretty badly. I don't think that we should, Christians or any other denomination of a religious uh, uh, belief system, should see themselves in such a way that they can take t- full advantage of the world and pollute it and, and toxify it because they feel in their belief system that they're stewards of the earth. They can do whatever they want. All the all the land, all the all the animals have the land, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the plants. Of, of, no, uh-uh. you know, because we can see just through the activities of Monsanto what kind of stewards of the earth we have been. And so I'm going to suggest that no, 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 we are not stewards of the earth. We are brothers and sisters of all the creations that are on this world. And because we have a, the, the grace within us, the awakened grace within us, we have the ability to give a, a healing without taking credit for it. We give all credit to the kundalini. We give all credit to the divine. Okay, We can help with this problem. But you must choose to do it. And if you don't choose to help, and yet you still choose to partake of the food that you've been eating, well then, you know, you will reap the rewards of that inaction. Whether whether it be, you know, eating the cleanest food there is or eating the, the most radioactive food there is, you will reap those rewards. You may reap those rewards anyway, even if you do give service. I'm living 40 minutes from the Pacific Ocean, 40 minutes, okay, that's by car, so it's really like 20 minutes, if that, by air, and, uh, you know, so I'm I'm already radioactive, <laughs> I've been glowing for a while, 
uh, and, and so have, have some of you, I imagine. Uh, so look at this and begin to take a proactive approach to this. Blend with your kundalini. Use this as a reason to blend with your kundalini. If you haven't ever done it before because you were too afraid of kundalini syndrome or having these amazing changes happen to you and your body and your life and your family and your work and the foundation of, of, uh, of how you fit into your society and, and into yourself, your soul, reach into the kundalini now. Reach in and begin that conversation. Follow the safety pr protocols that are on Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. Just go straight to the safeties there, uh, and begin to have that conversation with your Kundalini. Now is the time. Now is the time. It wasn't 2012. It wasn't the year 2000. It wasn't any of the other disaster predictions. It's now. The disaster is happening now. And uh, this is your opportunity to give this world, this earth, this people, these creations, the billions of creations on this world, uh, a way to survive and, uh, and flourish inside these man-made toxic events. Okay. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to call 347-934-0026. I would like to go Kristen? ahead and bring him in. Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. And sometimes your voice is warbling. Oh, no. And there's a bit of a vibe. Yeah, just occasionally. It self-corrects. So I'm just wondering, is there a, are you moving or doing anything? Well, I'm, my, my mouth is moving. I know. <laughs> Besides that, oh, I don't that's know that's why it's, why it's, that's okay. It's all right. I mean, you know, yeah. we've been dealing with this ever since we started these, these yeah, shows. So, uh, Amelia, how much do uh -huh. you and your family depend upon ocean products for, for sustenance? Well, that's interesting, Chris. We, well, we live by the ocean, but we're by the Atlantic Ocean over in Ireland. And I think... So we're not as affected, but we probably are affected. I haven't looked at, at a map recently, so I'm not sure. But um, I have stopped eating fish since July um, through my kundalini. I just was given to not eat fish anymore. So that's interesting for me. Well, well, um, well that's, that's, that's also something that maybe some of the listeners may want to consider as well. No more fish. Yeah. Fresh water or salt water. Yeah, and I mean, um, my John, my hubby, he certainly likes his fish. As a matter of fact, he's replaced a lot of red meat with fish, so he's been eating fish. Um, we wouldn't always know the source of the fish, but most of it is from the Atlantic. Okay, all right. But that is we'll also just... now going to be, con yeah. Yeah, that will get it. Looks like. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah, yeah. Amelia brings up a good point, you know, that she lives off the Atlantic coastline. Well, you know, it is all one ocean. We just call it different oceans. So the Pacific Ocean is the same water that flows into the Atlantic, which is the same water that flows into the Arctic, which is the same water that flows into the South Atlantic, which is the same water that flows into the Indian Ocean. And all the various oceans, the all the way until it comes back around to the Pacific Ocean. So it's one ocean. Okay. It's one ocean. And the nuclear radiation may not reach the coast of Ireland or the coast of France or England or Scotland or or any of the Nordic countries or the African coastline yet, but it's going to. It's not going away. It's not evaporating. Okay. So these are issues that that uh, that many 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 people need to take in consideration, but especially you as Kundalini people, you you are in you know in a, in a relationship with the with the Mother Earth. Mother Earth, Mother Nature is Mother Shakti Kundalini, sacred feminine. Blend with her. 
open a conversation with your sacred feminine, Mother Earth, Mother Nature within you at the base of your spine, right down to the tip of your tailbone, conversation with your Kundalini. And for those of you that, that want to be healers and to be helpful, you know, I, I really, I, um, I commend you. I commend you for that. Uh, now is the time. Whether you think you're K-active or not, you go out there, you grab some dirt in your hands, and you, or you just press your palms down into the soil, and you begin to pray to the Kundalini. Pray for the, for the health of the life that is currently on this world. Pray for the mind change of humanity that is currently on this world. And, uh, and really begin your healing service now. Don't wait until you have a spinal sweep or creas or you're seeing visions or anything. Don't let that drive you. Let your own health drive you. Let the health of your kids, your grandkids, your best friends, your neighbor, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, let that drive you. And don't just do it one time. Go out there and do it a number of times. Make it a meditation that you do daily. And I know it's winter time, and I know in parts of Canada and northern United States, you know, it's not so easy to go out there and, and get your hands, you know, in the in the dirt because, you know, in Canada it could be permafrost right now. And in, and, and in the United States, you know, like North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, these areas, you know, they're experiencing fairly really cold weather. But you still... You know, put your gloves on, grab a handful of snow, and start talking to the crystals in the snow. It's still the Mother Shakti. But get out there and start to make a difference. Your Kundalini will call you and will respond to you in these ways. Okay? I was out there in the, in the soil today planting the seeds of hope and the seeds of regeneration and the seeds of grace for this environment that is under constant attack from humanity. You do this too. It, you know, it, it's not even 10 minutes. But you can make it last as long as you want. Okay. This is really important for people to understand. This is happening now. You're breathing this now. If you're eating fish from the Pacific Ocean, you're eating this radiation now. Get a Geiger counter. See how many rads your meal has in it. <laughs> then you will have a, a government-approved uh, level of radiation, as they call it, the uh, the, the, the GAR, government-approved radiation level, GARL. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I wouldn't oh. put it past them. I would not put it past them. And, and, and so the scenario is, oh, well, you can live with this. And, oh, gosh, you know, the, the fish that are bleeding from their bellies, their eyes, and their gills, well, that's exactly what happens to humanity. If you look at any of the Hiroshima or Nagasaki uh, pictures of people having severe radiation trauma, that's exactly what was happening to them. Bleeding from the eyes, nose, mouth, having clumps of hair fall out just like the the uh, polar bears and the walruses up there in, in, in Alaska. Okay, this this is not lightweight stuff here. Kristen, yeah. you know, um, what you're saying um, is very inspiring, and um, I have to say, uh, but I just want to go back to what you said about the disaster happening now and I'm thinking of you know all the drama and the excitement that was there pre-2012 you know about the planetary and all the different things that people were predicting could occur and here we are in 2013 and really you're right this is the this is a disaster this is something that has is completely changing the world isn't it and it's like I think I read something recently that somebody i can't remember who it was but somebody said that um you know it's not front news because this isn't a war but you know nobody has dropped a bomb we've you know no planetary thing has actually happened but we're actually doing this to ourselves and um, this worldwide contamination 
And so, you know, it really is, it is that disaster. Yeah, it is. I'm just thinking of it in those terms now, and I'm kind of going, my God, you know? Yeah, it, it, uh, it happened in 2011. Okay, so the That's entire right. year, the entire year of 2012, these loads and loads and loads and loads of radioactivity were being pumped into the ocean. But everybody was looking, you know, at the sky, looking, oh, Planet X or, you know, aliens, you know, coming in or, you know, massive, massive earthquakes and the whole thing, you know, the the entire 2012 was all about Fukushima, but nobody was looking there. Partly, I think, people just don't want to look at that. I mean, that is so depressing. And you feel, you know, the, the, the typical person will feel so unable to make a difference, so, you know, just abandoning their responsibility to, to, to the degree where they don't want to do anything. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to try to help. They don't feel that they can help, and and so you know it just kind of dissolves in, into a into a, a real passive, passive passivity, uh, you know, passiveness. It's like, oh well, gosh, it's so far out of my control, and I, you know, I can't do anything about that. Well, you can. You can do something about this. You who have the Kundalini, you who know about the Kundalini, who have read about the Kundalini, who have listened to some of these programs, you know that your Kundalini is alive and well within you and it defies the principles of science. All these things that we've talked about in these, in these many programs since we started uh, uh, last uh, December 2012, all of these conversations about all the different phenomena and the, and, the, and the different experiences that a person can have with regards to the Kundalini, uh, and these, these, many of these experiences defy uh, science, defy physics. The laws of physics don't really matter to the Kundalini. Well, that goes straight up with this healing that I'm suggesting that we all do. And so this very next week, this next Wednesday, I want to hold a mass healing for this world. And we'll do it on air. So get as many of your Kundalini friends to tune into this channel, and we will do a mass healing uh, with the Kundalini on this world. On the air, the water, the earth, everything. The life of this world. Uh, really, really go out of your way to do this. And don't do this just one time. Do this over and over and over until your kundalini says it's enough. And she may never tell you it's enough. You know, and the other thing is, is you want to consider is when you give a healing with the kundalini, by giving that healing through kundalini, you give yourself a healing through kundalini as well. And you're giving you know the the butterflies are healing you're giving the the geese and the and the swans and the fish and the plants and the the beautiful rocks and crystals you're giving all of that a healing so this very next wednesday at three o'clock uh in the afternoon pacific coast time pacific standard time at p s t we will do an on-air live healing. You know, you know. I'll just kind of walk everybody through it. Um, let me see. How, now, I'm surprising Amelia with this, so she doesn't know this is occurring. <laughs> so, Amelia, come back. This went to the bathroom, which then don't come back. Stay there. Okay. All right. So yeah. So Wednesday, three o'clock PST. Uh, we're going to hold a live on-air healing for this world and, and just kind of give you the basics so that you can go outside or, or, or anywhere that you can and uh, begin to give these healings to this world. Okay, and that's just, you know, let's just focus on Fukushima because later on we can focus on other areas like, uh, um, like uh, people finding different ways of, of powering their life, 
different ways of electrical power generation or things of that nature. Uh, but this this we need to do right now with Fukushima. Okay, there are aspects of this world and of this life that do not conform to the methods of science. There are mystical responses to radiation spills or to the oil spill that occurred in the Gulf. Okay. There are many options left for Kundalini people that do not require a basis in, in the scientific method or science science based methodologies. You can go into the mystical aspect and you can retrieve tools in the mystical aspect that are more than able to correct some of these issues that have come up through the indulgence, ignorance, and, and uh, egomaniacal processes of, of humanity. Okay. Amelia, you're back? I hadn't gone away. I just had un- not unmuted myself. <laughs> I'm here. So we're doing a healing this time next week uh, for the world. And I know that sounds pretty, you know, that sounds oh so ego, you know, oh, we're going to heal the world. Well, it's not that way. It's just the time has come for these types of of, of, uh, of gifts to be given. And, um, you know, I didn't choose Kundalini in Fukushima. That was chosen by the Kundalini. So she wants us to look at it. She wants us to give this healing, to to take these steps and to go forward into a proactive State, rather than just listening to the blog talk radio state, okay, let's get into a proactive healing mind state uh, where we can give of the kundalini within us to this world and to everything and everyone on this world. Let us do this daily. Uh, this next Wednesday, and that will be uh, the... Uh, Let's see, this is the 27th already? No. The 4th? The 4th of December, Kristen. Thank you. The 4th of December. Um, this is when we're going to do it. Okay? So tell your friends, tell tell the people that you know that have Kundalini, uh, you know, don't uh, don't put yourself at any risk you know, by telling, you know, people about Kundalini that maybe, you know, Kundalini would frighten them or scare them or cause them to call the you know, the ambulance on you. But uh get yourself together and those who you who who you know of that have Kundalini and let's give this world a healing. Uh let's let's do it tonight. Let's do it every day, every week day, every day. Uh until the fourth and then we'll all do it together. So those of you who can Place your hands in the snow or place your hands in the soil or place your hands in the ocean. Do it. I don't care if you're on the Atlantic coast or if you're on the uh, Caribbean coast or the Gulf coast or the, uh, you know, any of the coasts. It's all one ocean. And you spread that grace to to the, any of the oceans that you can touch. So, Eileen, that means you down there in Florida. Okay, you can... You can touch that water, and any of you that are in Florida or, or on any of the coastlines in the States or in other countries, you just go out there and hold that water or just push your hands in the water and give that healing. Remember, there's a radiance that comes off of your hands. Uh, I'm being shown a radiance of about eight inches off of a person's the skin of their hands, you know, a golden glow. Let that golden glow go into the waters or on the land. Okay, Give this world a healing. And continue to give this world a healing. Don't stop. Don't stop because, because you think that it's a one-time thing. It's not. It's not a one-time thing. Give this world a healing. And, and uh, for any, any other Kundalini... Uh, uh, a conversation that you may want to have, you can call 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. All right. So 
I'm going to wait for some callers, and, and if I get some callers, then we'll continue the conversation. If not, I'm going to go ahead and terminate this program uh, a little less than an hour early. But I do want you to, to mark off December 4th, 2013, uh, and, and tune in here to this to this blog talk radio station, and uh, let's give a healing. And that all of you folks who listen on uh, on uh, on the Facebook or read the Facebook, all of the folks of you that are at KAS1 Yahoo, or all of you folks who may be watching the videos, well, let's do this. Let's make this work. I'm going to do it regardless. I'll do it every single day. And I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, so let's see. We have, uh, okay, I got, uh, does Rosemary have a question? Is that what the question mark is there? Yes, Chris, and I put her through now. Thank you. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Chris. Can you hear me? Clearly. Okay, good. Um, I am very inspired by what you said, and my first thought, of course, was, well, what am I going to eat, you know, like that? And um, because I know that fish provides us, in this whole big picture, it provides us a lot of good stuff. And uh, but, but I could see that, that narrow view, and I'm certainly inspired by what you're saying. And I, I do pay attention at times to us as a human family and wonder at times, you know, how we can shift the way we are about the world, the the planet, and what are our needs versus the needs of the world. And but I I, I wanted to talk with you because I was promising as you were talking. I said I can do that. I have can get to touch the land um, uh, right outside me here, and mm-hmm. I will do that every day. And when you talked about the waters, um, here in Minnesota, we have the Mississippi running down from above down to upper upper Minnesota down through to the Gulf. And I don't know how to get to that, but I will try to find out. You can where... get to that. I, I, I've been down to the to the coastline of the uh, of the Mississippi up there. It's not as big up there as it is down there in Louisiana. <coughs> you can you can uh, reach right into the water there. I mean, you know, be careful. Well, I mean, where it's accessible to be able um, near that yeah, water, but but, but I'll that, find that, it. That would be a good a, a good thing for you to do. Now, as far as what to eat, you still need to follow your Kundalini guidance. No, I'm not asking. I'm just telling you and owning my narrow, selfish first view that automatically comes up. <laughs> that's and okay. That's, that's right. not enough. <laughs> but <laughs> no. No, I, I don't need an answer, but it's like, yeah, sure, that's the first thing that I thought about. But uh, yeah, what yeah. I have on my shelf. You know. Why? Well, you know, and I know, and I I know because I've worked with you for a while now that you're you're a person when she says she's going to do something, she's going to do it, and so I appreciate that in you, Rosemary, and Thank you. Uh, and I will join with you every day, going out and giving this world a healing with the Kundalini, blending the Kundalini yes. into a healing equation for this world. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. And it looks like we have another questioner here. There's Fasji. Hello, Fasji. Master C. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I am I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I um I, I particularly enjoyed uh this uh particular talk on Fukushima. I've been watching this very closely ever since um it started. And I have been appalled at how um, the folks in, in Japan have actually sort of turned a blind eye to it. But that's not to say that, you know, I can make any judgments. Anyway, uh, you mentioned that on Wednesday and up until Wednesday uh, we will be doing this this this, um, uh, this sitting 
love and energy uh, of healing and health to Mother Earth. I, I live in the Great Lakes area, um, so there's, there's plenty of water here to connect with. Uh, is is there any, or uh, are there any particular instructions that you would give uh, as we as we do this blessing? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. When if you're if you're down by the water, um, connect with your kundalini first. I don't care if you need to do the five Tibetans or do any part of the practice that a person would do. Uh, you know, daily, like somebody who's interested in the Shakti pot or something, I, I ask them to do the safeties every day. And so if if you're able to do the safeties and really make that connection with Kundalini, then come down and just hold the water in your hand or just put your hands in the water and say a prayer to the goddess Shakti. Say that prayer. Whatever comes to your mind. Mm-hmm. And Whatever would that also want. apply to the land as well, Master C? That would that would also apply to the land as well. And then on this Wednesday, this next Wednesday, December 4th, um, I will give very specific prayers uh, uh, okay. for, for, for all of us to, to partake of. Now, I've done... I've done these mass healings before. They they seem to be somewhat effective, and so I would encourage everybody, uh, you know, everybody here, Rosemary, Fasti, Amelia, myself, uh, Tim, and, and all the different guests, uh, uh, guests 213, 2412-2413, 2415-2684, and I would, I would recommend that everybody come and begin and partake of this mass healing that we're going to give to this world and all life upon this world. Mm. Okay. And as a, you can expect to read about Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Fasci. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put this on the Facebook and on the Yahoo groups and we're gonna really we're gonna really, you know, bring this into people's awareness. Right. Okay. Uh, it's great, Chris, and since since you know my Kundalini is really resonating it with for me, um, because I think I've been actually quite passive. Exactly what you've been saying, I haven't been um, proactive. I've been observing. I've been aware. I mean, even to the extent that here in Ireland, I said we're not that affected. But in actual fact, we have the Gulf Stream, which washes the shores of County Kerry. Uh, where I live, um, and it is one ocean. And so I really feel inspired by what you've been saying, and I'm going to go to the ocean every day this week. And, yes, let's do this. Um, let's really do this. I thank you. Absolutely. I can agree more, Amelia. And, and even though I can't get to the ocean as easy as you can or to a large body of water as easy as fast you can, I'm going to put my hands in the soil, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to merge, merge with the soil through the Kundalini, and give that an extremely wide footprint, and so that the water that 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 uh, covers the soil through the rivers and the creeks and all the different areas, uh, that these areas also will receive a Kundalini healing. Okay, the time has really come for Kundalini people to to step up to the plate, to step up uh, to the responsibilities that are given to those that have extraordinary gifts. We don't have gifts because you know we're you know we want to be a circus act or we want to get on TV or you know become a movie star or somebody that uh, you know does does amazing feats of of, uh, of whatever, you know, for money. Uh, we, we, are, we are honoring that from which we have come from, that from which our bodies have come from, and that is the earth. We're like 78% water. And, and, you know, if you take all the water out, then basically you have just some minerals and, and some proteins and, and things of that nature. Okay, so let's jump in and let's prove that 
that leads to the kundalini within ourselves, that we are worthy of this grace. We can have it responsibly. We can give healings, not just for ourselves and our kids and our grandkids, but for everybody's kids and grandkids. And for the grandkids of the chipmunks and the crickets and the and and the the sow bugs and the birds and the mammals and the, and the fish, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not just our grandkids that are. Yeah, and it's not about. I mean, you're talking there, you know, about it's not about these. It's also not about being small in a local way. Speaking of myself, you know. Um, in a local community way because I am of this earth in an expensive way and I do need to step up Prism I actually do need to step up so <laughs> I'm going to do that <laughs> well that's, that's all of us that's all of us Amelia yes. yeah, absolutely <laughs> I'm still here but I, I wanted to stay on just to, to say thank you very much for bringing this very important um, message today um, Master C and I'm going to get off Thank you so much, Amelia and Rosemary. I enjoy everything. Thank you. And you, Fast Chief. You got a great voice. You got a great voice. I know. Every time he he says hello, and I go, Fast Chief, I just melt. (laughs) I think you should be doing these radio shows, Fast (laughs) Chief. Hmm. So yeah, let's take the hint. Everybody, let's take the hint and, and look, it, you may not be able to do this. You may not be able to find the time or, you know, or, or have the wherewithal to to go out and do this. And, and all I'm going to suggest for these days before the December 4th, just go out and touch a tree, touch the ground, touch the water, a wild water source if you can. And just say, from my kundalini, I give healing. I give healing and grace into this world. Through the water, through the land, through the air. Obedience of my physical being. I give a healing to this world. As I am of this world, therefore this world is of me. And I choose to have positive, healthy, constructive um, healing given to this world that I am and that is me. This personalizes it. I want you to personalize it. Okay. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's a lot of Kundalini people that'll say, oh my gosh, we're all one and this doesn't really matter. You're just like, you know, we're just going to. You know, ascend, or we're just gonna, you know, go ahead and and uh, no, <laughs> no, it does matter. This world does matter. The sacred feminine does matter. And you know, I'm not buying this. Oh, we are one. We are all one. Well, it's true. We are one, but we're also separate within that oneness. Okay, we're also unique. And oneness does not disqualify us from responsibility. You know, just because you're, oh, we're one. Well, that doesn't mean you're without responsibility. If you have partaken at all, ever, in your life of nuclear power, then you have partaken of this problem already before it even occurred. Okay? So you're in some way, you're indebted to this world. Be part of the solution. Don't continue to be part of the problem. Okay? Um, If you at all can go solar, go solar. Yes, I understand the manufacturing of solar cells does, you know, I mean, it's all connected. I get it. But if you can at all change your power source options, then do it if you can. Most of us cannot. I have a trailer, and I have a generator. That generator runs on gasoline. Okay, so boom, there I am, right back into the mix of things with this. And so, um, and, and you know, I, I know most folks wouldn't be able to live the way I live anyway, and, 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 and so I don't expect that of anybody. But I don't know that the, the, the going out once a day, 
picking up a handful of soil or a handful of snow or water or whatever and giving a prayer to the earth, to the sacred feminine within us, is asking too much for anybody. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. You can hold that leaf. You can hold that grass. You can hold that rock and give that same blessing. Okay? You're not limited with kundalini the way you think or the way your ego has allowed you to think that you have limitations within the kundalini. You do not have limitations. I mean, the one uh, limitation that is self, uh, self-provided is fear. Oh, gosh. I don't want to do this healing. My kundalini might awaken. <laughs> well, you certainly don't want to be listening to this program if you don't want to have your kundalini awakened. Okay. For those of you uh, who do have the kundalini and, and are maybe feeling like it's a blessing to have the kundalini, well, this I'm talking with you right now. Protect your source. Protect the goddess within. Give her the love that you have to give. And give that healing to this world. You know, the more people do it, the more powerful it becomes. And remember the size of that of that kundalini footprint. It is no small thing. Now, I'm on Facebook at, uh, I believe it's Chris M. Kundalini at Facebook, but there's also one at Chris Mitchell, M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L, at Facebook. I prefer to be called Chris M., but I don't, you know, call me Hey You, for that matter. Uh, what I care about is, is your participation within this, this little act of grace that may have very large outcomes. But don't expect anybody to come pat you on the back. They're not going to come patting you on the back. Say, hey, well, I might. <laughs> I, I might pat you on the back. But uh, the, 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 the powers that be, shall we say, the governments and the companies that are out there really causing these problems <clears throat> and ignoring you know, any kind of a cleanup opportunity, they won't come and pat you on the back. You know, they may say, oh, well, science came through once again, and okay, fine. Whatever whatever takes care of the problem is I'm fine with, but let's take care of the issue. Let's take care of this planet kundalini-wise in ways that only kundalini people can do. And if you'd like to call in, the number is area code 347-934-0026. And uh, I'm willing to talk with you about any aspect of your Kundalini awakening experience. Um, with the healing, remember. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was going to take the opportunity, if I could, to just tell people about the seminars that are I have sure. dates for now. Yeah. Okay. So the, there's going to be a seminar in America in March, and there's going to be one in Ireland in March. Now, the date in America is, in the United States, is March the 22nd and the 23rd. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. And at this stage, it is probably going to be in New York, but that is not definite yet. But I would very much appreciate hearing from you um, if you have an interest in attending one of Quism seminars in the USA because in planning this, it's important to have that kind of information, and it, it helps me to know. Um, so New York, possibly, possibly Boston, but we will know in the next week or two where it's going to be. But please do get in contact with me. That's yeah. on kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And then in Ireland, the seminar is on the 29th and the 30th of March, 29th and, that, and 30th. And that will be held at yes. Midrange. That's a new Grange in the same place, in the same venue that we had it recently. And um, I'm really looking forward to returning there. So again, if you're living in Europe, please get in contact with me and I can help you with um, how to get here. 
um, by air. It's a very short trip, really, to Ireland. And the further out that you book your uh, airfares with Ryanair in particular, the better value they are. When we began planning the last seminar, the flights from the United Kingdom were just £30 sterling return, which is an excellent price. But as it got nearer to the seminar, the prices go up. So um, the date is definite. It's the 29th and 30th of March. So do get in contact with me and let me know that you're interested and book your flights. Um, and this will include accommodation as well. The accommodation will be included in that seminar. So again, it's kundalini matters at gmail.com. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, the venue there in Ireland is is excellent. Uh, it is a very good deal. And to to go into New Grange within a kundalini uh, understanding and a kundalini environment is also extremely uh, powerful. Now, the last time we went in there. Uh, we had we had some very very outstanding uh, kundalini phenomena occur for the people during the seminar. We that we basically make it a part of the seminar to go in there and to experience the uh, the darkness and the and the, to see the uh, the uh, you know how the sunlight comes in there. But also, you know the the, the kundalini herself is in there. And the last time we had you know and the, you know we had. Uh, very uh, strong interaction with the Kundalini while we were in there, and so I just want want you to know that the uh, yeah the, the Irish one is very 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 positive, and and I look forward to doing one in New York or Boston or wherever on the on the east coast of the United States. So uh, if you you know if this is the path that is calling to you, then you must listen to it. You must listen to it. Your life will never be the same until you start listening to it. And once you start listening to it, well, then you, you emerge into this, this new, powerful, beautiful place, this loving, blissful uh, place of, uh, of, of dual realities. Uh, Amelia wrote on Facebook today how she experiences uh, uh, dual realities happening. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, Amelia? I know you said something to me, Chrism, but it was just during one of those warbles, and I didn't hear you. Sorry. Um, did, did you want to talk a little bit about what it is to walk in dual realities? Oh. Huh. Well, that has been happening for me recently in a, in a different way. Um, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. It's very hard for me to put into words. It's like... Um, some of you with Kundalini will have experienced maybe a waking vision where you're in your physical reality and for a time, another reality, you become more aware of it. You might have a waking vision. But in the, what's going on for me at the moment is one doesn't fade out and the other one come in. The two things are happening or the two experiences are happening at the very same time. It's like it's like if you've experienced a bilocation, you know, I've experienced that before. And in going to the other place, um, senses of the present physical go away as you go to the other location. But that hasn't been happening. It's been, it's been actually quite amazing. Um, I'll be interested to see how, how I'd be interested to see how it uh, merges with the healing we'll do on the 4th. Yeah. And how it merges, and how and how it merges with what you're going to be doing on the seashore every day. Yes, yes, yes. It's beautiful. But I mean, what you're saying about if the Kundalini is calling you, I mean, I cannot. I mean, that is why I, you know, I do this and and help to make these um, seminars available for people because of the importance of listening to that call. And you provide a venue and an opportunity for people to actually come and connect in with their Kundalini and learn about what is occurring. And so that's why I do it, because once you do that, once you actually take that step into listening to your Kundalini, your life will never be the same again. I mean, the blessings 
that come, the grace that comes, the way of living your life, once you have taken that step, is incredible. <laughs> it's not all fluffy bunnies, but it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. There can be some fluffy bunnies, too. Yeah, there, there are. <laughs> I've had pet rabbits before. They're very cool. Um, so, so the so the scenario is absolutely. If if you feel the Kundalini is calling to you, then come to one of these workshops or just begin to practice the safeties. But make an action, make a move, lift a finger, even if it's just to join with your thumb, you know, your forefinger tip to your thumb tip, and to do ten minutes of meditation. Do it. Begin this conversation with your Kundalini. And if you want to, you can start uh, this this week, the seven days, the seven days of healing for this world. Start this week, and then we'll culminate and do it all together at uh, at three p- p.m. PST on December fourth. Okay. So that's. That's what I would like you to focus on, and that's what I'd like you to remember from this conversation. For those of you that are listening in the archives, and if you're listening in the archives after this has occurred, you can go right outside. You can go right outside and do this wherever you are, whenever you are. And you can have this conversation through your kundalini to this world. This is important. This affects everybody. This affects every life pattern on this world. It's very important that we also take a step in the direction of preserving and protecting life. Not only the life within us, but the life that surrounds us. We do not live on an island. We are a species interconnected with other species interconnected with other species interconnected with other species interconnected with this world, this planet. Let's choose. Let's choose to give a healing to this planet. And through those interconnections to all life that is here on this world. Okay. And if you have any comments or questions about what I'm bringing up, today and I'm sorry that it's uh, that my my voice is wobbling as uh, Amelia suggests uh, but if any of my words are, are clearly being spoken to you and you're able to pick up from my words an invitation to you from your Kundalini accept the invitation Fukushima is going to bring a huge level of change on this world Change of food source, change of energy source, change of pollution level, change of toxicity level, change of radioactivity level, change of health, the health of the current human system. Step up and protect yourself, your kids, your neighbor's kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's grandkids. The chipmunks' grandkids, the crickets' grandkids, the birds' grandkids, all the grandkids. For those of us who are mature adults, whatever species, let us let us begin to give in a way that only people with awakened kundalini can give. Let's do this. And if there are no more callers and no more questions... And I will, I will terminate this talk earlier by about 20 minutes. Do you have anything you'd like to say, Amelia, Fasti, or Rosemary? Go ahead, go no, ahead Amelia. Chris, no, Chris, and let me just check with the others. No, but thank you very, very much. I'm looking forward um, to coming out of the passiveness and to becoming proactive and to going to the ocean every day this week. And, and you know... It does matter, and bringing a healing and and and, and offering that. I and thank you very very much, Chris. Very well, much that's, indeed. That's something that you remind me of, uh, Amelia, is uh, is if you are in any way able to go into severe 
devotion, severe devotion to to your god or your goddess or, or whatever uh, religious belief system that you that you uh, are comfortable with. If you're able to go into devotion before you do the healing, it is much better. And Amelia, you have some experience with this, yes? Yeah? Well, yes, because before I do healings in my work with people, I go into devotion um, to the Kundalini, and it makes it actually makes a big difference. So, yes. I, I shall certainly do that on the seashore. So Fast G and Rosemary and, and Tim Ashworth and any of the other people that are listening, uh, go into devotion. Go into, fall in love with your kundalini. Fall in love with the options and the opportunities that she is giving you. And take that proactive step. And I'll shut up now. I'll shut up. I'm starting to sound like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Fast and Rosemary, is there anything you want to add before we go? Because you're live there if you want to speak. No, I'm good. Okay. okay. All right, then. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a beautiful, beautiful day or night, morning or, or, or evening afternoon whatever it is where you are and i look forward to to giving this healing uh you know these seven days but especially on december 4th please mark your calendar and if you can do the healings begin today tonight bye bye Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience uh, here on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, today, as promised last week, we'll be doing a live mass healing of the Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster in the north end of, of Japan. And um, so I would like you all to, if you, if you can get a pen and paper, if you're in a position where you can get a pen and pencil out or pen and paper, and, uh, and get ready to write some things down, if you need to. I'm not saying that you have to, but there is part of, uh, a part of this context where, where uh, you know, it's helpful to write things down. Uh, before we get started, though, I'd like uh, to welcome Amelia Santara onto the program. Hello, Amelia. How are you? Hello, Chris. I'm very well. Thank you. It's good to be here. I think and the sound it, is good, Chris, and you're coming through loud and clear, as I hope I am. Oh, good. Is John Is John helping us in the other room? Yes, John is in the other room, so he will let us know should there be any, Hello, any difficulty. Again, <laughs> in the chat room, maybe people would let us know as well. So if I can begin by giving out the website that you can go to if you'd like to make a donation um, and support the work that CRISM does on Kundalini Awakening Systems, the address you can go to is ascension Kundalini dot blogspot.com and on the right upper hand side of the page you will see a donate button and it's very simple and easy to use and so if you are in a position to donate and if you wish to do so um, please go there to ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com and if I could say something as well for a moment or two about the seminars that we're organizing for 2014. Um, the first seminars are going to be held in March. And we know the dates already, so if you have that viral out, you can write them down. The first one is going to be held on the East Coast, um, most probably in the New York area, but a venue hasn't definitely been decided on yet. But the date for that is the 22nd of March and the 23rd of March. And if you're on the East Coast and you have an interest in attending that, 
I would encourage you to write and let me know. And the address you can write to is um, oh, said she going completely blank. What's my address, Kundalini <laughs> Kundalini Matters. <laughs> Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com. <laughs> and if you're in Europe, there's a seminar going to be held the following weekend, and that's on the 29th and the 30th of March. And it's going to be held in Dublin in the same venue that we had the last seminar in October. And um, again, please make contact with me and I can help you there with regards to traveling and um, give you information on flights and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm a bit of a travel agent when it comes to Ryanair. So please feel free to contact me again on Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. And I hope to see many of you at the seminar and I would encourage you to really consider coming if if you're getting an inclination or if you're getting um, a communication from your Kundalini that you should come, please take the time to consider it and do come. It will be well worth your while. So thank that's you. the criticism I'm looking forward to the show. No, thank you. Thank you for your announcements, Amelia. And, and just in case people don't know what a hyphen is, like me when I was, you know, last year, <laughs> a hyphen... <laughs> A hyphen is a dash between the words. So if I was going to put a hyphen between one and two, it would be one dash two. So in this Actually, case, it's, yeah. Sorry, Chris, I'm sorry I interrupted you. I wanted to say something about another seminar that's happening in September. Um, and Rosemary is hosting that in Minnesota. It's going to be on, as far as I know, the last week well, in, within the last two weeks of September 2014. So if that part of the uh, USA is convenient or good for you, please put that in your diary as well um, in Minnesota at the end of September. And there'll be yes. more details um, coming through on that later. Sorry, Chris, you were saying about hyphens. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, uh, to, to make a donation... Uh, you can go to Ascension Dash Kundalini Blogspot uh, um, dot, dot com, I believe, and uh, you can go there. The other the other areas that you may want to look at for this this kind of information is that uh, go on to YouTube if you want to see videos, and go to Chrisum dot Kundalini on YouTube, and you can I have about two hundred and seventy five videos there. And then uh, you can also go to uh, uh, Chrisum Kundalini on Facebook or Chris Mitchell on Facebook. And uh, you can reach my page there, and you can, you can either follow that page or you can just read that page and see if it agrees with you. Um, it shouldn't agree completely with you because most of us are run by our ego, and therefore... If your ego is saying, yeah, 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 do this, you might want to look at that <laughs> a little differently. <laughs> um, so you have that option as well. And then you can also just write to me directly at K, as in Kundalini, K, fire for all. So that's K F I R E um, F O R A L L at yahoo.com. So K, fire for all at yahoo.com. Um, you can also go to the site that Glen Ola in Australia uh, uh, has designed and maintained for Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, and that is Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. And uh, you can visit that website and get, a, get a, much information from that website as well. Uh, as promised last week, we are going into a, a, uh, a mass healing event with Fukushima. Uh, Fukushima has the capacity to drastically change all of our lives in very, very pronounced, specific ways. Um, and all of this, I think, is due to the, to the, to the greed and the, the, the uh, lack of uh, foresight uh, given from people who maybe had more of an interest in how much money they could make rather than how safe they could make a nuclear reactor. And, and we 
have other examples of this in the United States as well. So, you know, by no means are we to castigate or show any disfavor to the Japanese. The Japanese did not plan on having a huge tsunami uh, wreck their coastline. Okay? They didn't plan on it. And so, the, And I know they're doing as best that they possibly can, can do to to uh, correct the situation they're they're really you know they're the ones that are suffering the most right now because you know the the radiation is spreading all over the land it's spreading you know through the waters through the coastline through the air and so when we begin to do this healing i want you to keep in mind that the japanese are suffering the most right now we'll we'll be suffering later on too uh, unless we can we can do these healings, but uh, right now I don't want any finger of blame pointed at anyone. Right now we need to work from a position of forgiveness and unity, unity of humanity and unity of intention within this healing that we're about to do. Okay, now uh, the healing methodology that I find the most appropriate for Kundalini uh, is is uh, currently a uh, a practice put out by Max Freedom Long uh, back in the uh, back in the 30s and 40s of the last century, and I'm going to read a little bit about him. Max Freedom Long discovered, named, and developed Kuna prayers through extensive study of the ancient Hawaiian language. It's not like making a wish or a normal way of praying. It is, it is a manifesting procedure that is powerful and effective. It involves using the three minds. But the conscious mind gives a direction to the subconscious mind, which is the world of dreams and belief, and invokes the higher mind, which has the ability to connect with God. In order for a prayer to reach a higher self, the conscious mind must raise the vital force necessary uh, to propel the prayer through the subconscious mind. The higher self can then connect with beings and energies to help bring about the desired result. Okay. Uh, the, the Hawaiians wrote uh, a lot of what Max Freedom, almost all of what Max Freedom Long was able to uh, to learn with regards to the, the Huna prayer. Huna prayer is unlike your conventional prayer, and, and, and you know, within a Christian or a Buddhist or a Islamic or what whatever mainstream religion you may partake of, if any, uh, this is not the way that most people within those prayers will will understand how to pray. This prayer involves an, an, an actuation of energy. And for you to understand this, I have to explain a little bit more about this actuation of energy. Uh, the human being has the capacity to turn uh, certain levels of pranic energy into a, a, a powerful force of manifestation. The human body itself has the ability to instantaneously, almost instantaneously, change uh, pranic energy into another form of energy that, uh, for lack of a better term, we'll just call mana, M as in Mary, A-N-A. -A. Now, mana and prana are the same, except one has gone through the transformation through the human system and changed it into a form of energy that we will call mana. And this is, the mana is what is sent uh, to the high self or to the, to the to your kundalini from your your lower self, which would be your your consciousness or the the uh, the ego aspect of who you are. You got to remember that as much as you're taught and, and you hear me say it, you hear other people say it. Oh, don't do anything that the ego says. Well, you also understand that you never, ever hear, hear me or read of me saying to destroy, obliterate, kill, or, or do any other kind of harm to the ego. I am not, uh, 
I am not an, uh, you know, an, an ego killer, so to speak. I realize that the ego is part of who we are, and because it's part of who we are, there is a holy aspect to the ego as well. And it is this holy aspect of the ego or your, as the Hawaiians would call you, the unihipili aspect of yourself, this is the person that will relay your information directly to the kundalini. We have to use all of ourselves in order to initiate this kind of a prayer. So your, your higher mental consciousness self, what the Hawaiians would call the uhane, but we'll just call it your higher mental functioning self, uh, needs to decide what it is it wants to have done. In this case, healing Fukushima. So take out that pen and paper and write down the prayer that the that you want to have occur. So uh, you say um, uh, stopping uh, radioactive release uh, from Fukushima from doing any damage to the surrounding environment. Okay? So you're not taking away the radioactivity, you're just not allowing it to cause harm to any of the environment around it, which is not to say that, that you're saying, oh, you know, you're taking away all, all the effects of the radiation. Well, that's not true, okay? We're being very, very, very specific here, and we're giving a healing to stop the negative aspects or the hurtful, harmful aspects of the radiation from, uh, you know, from damaging the environment of the Pacific Ocean, of the Japanese islands, of any of the land masses of this world, but also from the plankton, shielding the plankton, shielding the fish, uh, shielding the zooplankton, shielding all life and minerals from the harmful effects of the radiation that's leaking out of the Fukushima nuclear reactor. So write it down in a way that you're comfortable with. See if you can fit it into one or two sentences. And so we'll just write that down, piece of paper. Give you a chance to do that. Just take a moment and think about it. Healing the effects of nuclear radiation that is hurtful to life and the environment of this world. At the Fukushima nuclear reactor in Japan. On this day, at this time, Okay. On this day, at this time, remember, we're not doing it tomorrow. We're doing it today, December 4th, 2013, 3.16 p.m. on the West Coast of the United States. Now, if this is another day, if this is uh, December 5th, where you are, well, then go ahead and, 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 and lock it down as December 5th, where you are, at whatever time it is where you are. Okay, give you a few more seconds here to formulate that prayer. It's, you know, read it right for yourself. It's got to read right for yourself. You, you don't, you're not going to be allowed to, to not have humans pay some sort of a price for their, for their greed and, and for allowing that kind of a, of a, uh, of a situation to develop. It's called hubris. You know, humanity thinks it's so strong and powerful that it could just put up a silly little wall and expect to stop a tsunami for the, you know, it's an amazing level of hubris with this. Okay, so people inevitably will have to pay a price, but the planet does not have to pay that price. Okay, but if you want to go ahead and put something of, of all people involved, then that's fine. That's fine too. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything against that. Okay. So 
I'm going to assume that you have your sentences available, and I'm going to look on the, uh, the studio here. Uh, everybody that's on the uh, on the, on the uh, chat room, I see Julie's there, I see Sigrid's there, and a lot of guests. So I want to welcome everybody there. Uh, I would like to also welcome everybody who's tuning in from the archives. When you reach this information or this conversation on the archives, at that date and at that time is when you begin your healing. Okay? Doesn't you don't have to do it right all at the same time. Okay, this isn't going to be happening uh instantaneously, although some aspects of it will of course be instantaneous. Uh I want this to be a, a 28 day to 30 day healing, something that you do every day. Okay, and I'll give you a very, it's a very relaxing thing to do. This is something that you don't need to grunt and groan and stress and sweat about this. This is, this is done from a position of higher consciousness, a sacred healing that involves your higher mental functioning self, your lower self, and the kundalini, which is the highest self that is waiting for you to develop this communication. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to ask the uh, the chat group users if you can tell me if I'm coming through clearly, uh, as we've had some sound issues before. Am I coming through clearly for those in the chat group? Just one of you answer yes or no, and and uh, we can uh, we can move on from there. So nobody's typing. <laughs> So I will. There she is. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, uh, Amelia, are you okay? All right. Okay. Uh, I see it's choppy at times. Well, okay. I'll just have to do my best with this then. Um, okay. I want you to to kind of sit in a relaxed position. Okay. Sit in a relaxed position, and I want to talk with you a little bit about what it is you're going to be developing, and this is called mana, M-A-N-A. So M as in Mary, A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, A as in Apple. Uh, this is from Max Freedom Long himself. The kahuna recognized the magnetic and the opposite repelling nature of vital force, or mana. Um, they knew the force is a thing which had to do with all thought processes and bodily activities. The life force was and is the essence of life itself. The kahuna symbol for this life force is water. Water flows, and so does vital force flow. Water fills things. So does the vital force. Water may leak away, and so may vital force. All thinking involves an electro-like activity of the mana. The word uh, mana o means thinking. The o is added to show that the process is one of using mana to produce thought. As each thought is formed, it is given its its. Uh, its body and is fastened by a thread of the same substance to basically it's talking about all your thoughts are fastened by a thread of mana uh, to the other thoughts which came before it. This is why I like you to, to do this healing over a number of days so that all of these thoughts that are given and these prayers are given that at different times on different days are all connected to each other. Mana is taken from the food and the air by the basic self and is stored uh, in, in the bodies of the self, the, the uh, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, uh, egoic, and the spiritual bodies of the person. Uh, the mana, when used as life force of the middle self, is changed in some subtle ways. The, the ancient kahuna symbolized this as dividing of the basic mana in two kinds. One called it mana-mana, indicating that it was doubled in power. 
so that it could be used by the middle self to direct the inner or basic, or as we know, the ego self to be. This is the force we know vaguely in modern psychology as the will. It is also the force which should at all times be strong enough to make the inner self or ego self carry out every suggestion. It is seldom used in its full strength, and so the basic self gets out of hand. Um, uh, you know, it, it can get out of hand. It doesn't have to get out of hand, but sometimes it'll flip from one activity to another without carrying out any of the suggestions or commands fully. So we're just going to make it really easy and simple for the ego self to understand this. Um, here's the action of accumulating a surcharge or a, a greater uh, charge of mana uh, is by taking a slow, deep breath. Now, we all know that this gives us an extra amount of energy if we're trying to, to do some sort of a physical thing. Uh, but this is what I was talking about earlier. This is about taking from prana and changing it into mana. We take our prana from the food. We take our prana from the environment. We take our prana from the water. We take our prana from, from our breath from our breathing. Okay, this this is how the human being is able to manifest energies taken from the environment. All of it is prana. But for our purposes and for this healing, we're changing that prana into mana. Now, as I said before, this is the closest uh, thing that I've been able to find without just going into to my kundalini and giving it my kundalini wants you to hear this which is why i've been directed to give it to you uh this doesn't matter what religion you belong to or what belief system you partake of this doesn't matter of any of those things and this gives you a very safe and complete process of power prayer that will give you results you will get results from this if you do this you will get results you know, yeah, so this is why it's so very important for you to be very careful about what it is you're asking to have happen. You can't say, like in this prayer, you can't say, oh, take out all the radioactivity in Fukushima. You can't do that. What you can do is you can deal with the effects of that radiation. And you can, depending upon the divine will, you know, this is all dependent upon the divine will, then then depending upon that will, uh your your prayer will be heard and acted upon. So you need to take a slow, deep breath. And you don't have to, to really push, push, push. This is not about having a lot of effort involved. How much effort does it take to, to have a slow, deep breath? Okay? Now, you can use certain visualizing techniques. So So if you can visualize... The, the water around Fukushima or emptying out of Fukushima as pure water, pure, beautiful, clear sea water, water that, that was there, you know, 200 years ago, okay? You can visualize that, and then you can add the mana mana to it, Okay? So as you visualize this and, you, and you're, you're developing energy for it, uh, this vital force that's changing from prana to mana because of your, the activity of your lungs and your intentions and your visualizing, okay? You can use these surcharges of mana in several valuable ways, including, you know, the healing of ourself and others and in making prayer action. That will have real power because you're using real power. You know, in many of the ways that we do our prayers these days, we don't know anything about prana or mana. Okay, We don't know that we can literally trans transform pranic energy into mana or mana loa. Okay? 
The Hawaiians knew this. This they kept their oral tradition intact. Their oral tradition has its a lot of its basis in uh, in the Egyptian mystery schools. You know, before the Hawaiians left that area and and traveled, you know, over land and sea to to make it to Hawaii. You know, they were using these techniques that whole time. Okay. These go beyond the realm of what science figures is possible. So I just need you to, need you to know that. So as you visualize this healing, as you read it in the message that you've written down, and as we begin to do some of these breathing techniques, you're using power to affect a prayer. So you're actually doing a power prayer. And yes, you can do this for yourself. You can do this for others. You can do this for the for for the Fukushima. Okay. Into this breathing a little bit. Okay. So I want you I want you to be in good health already. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Now I have done. I have done this on my own. I did this back in 2006, and it it worked. It worked. And you may ask questions like, oh, well, why isn't he rich as a casino, or why doesn't he do this for himself in order to... Well, I do. I do some of these power prayers uh, for the program. I, I tend not to want to do things like this for myself, because there are other reasons that the Kundalini wants people to donate. Donation on the outside looks like it's a gift to Kristen, but it's actually a lot more than that. It's a gift to the person making the gift. Okay? So, very important for a person to understand why I haven't been using this for myself, but I also use it for, for the people on the prayer list. Uh, you get to a point where you can constantly manufacture mana mana, the double strength of the prana that's developed in the human body as we do our breathing. Kundalini uh, gives you a much stronger and wider connection with itself uh, as you have as you have been touched by that grace. So does that grace work through you? But you can use this power prayer, this form of power praying. Uh, even if you have awakened kundalini. One of the main things you need to understand is that you cannot do harm with this. Do no hurt or harm to anyone or thing. Okay? You need to understand that. So let me re repeat it. You do no hurt or harm to any living thing. Okay? Now, let's see. Before we get started on this, do I have any questions um, uh, from the people on the chat group? Uh, just like I have Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. Hello, Elizabeth. And, and Julie, Celestial Rubies, and Sigrid, and Fashti. Hello. Hello, everybody. Has this uh, has the, the conversation so far been easy to to listen to? I'm I'm getting different things here. It looks like it's having a hard time listening. Now, why is that? Anybody can somebody on the chat group write about like Bashi? You're having a hard time listening. Is it? Am I going too slow? Is it choppy? What's going on? Before I start into this uh, with great energy, I want to make sure that uh, we're not all just wasting our time here, having, you know, depending on technology to catch up. Amelia, if you could ask John if she's, if he's able to hear this okay. Uh, I see. Yes, uh -huh. um, he is. Yeah, no, he says here that it's actually okay. Every now and then it gets a little bit hollow, but he's not getting that choppy from okay. here at all. Okay, and, and uh, Julie, so
says, uh, it's still choppy at times, but she's able to follow it. Okay, then. Secret, I hope it's coming in well for you, and Elizabeth, for you as well. And Fashi, it seems like you're logging in and out, so you may be trying to, uh, to correct that on your end. Okay, then. Let's give uh, Fashi a moment to come back. Okay. So with that, with that uh, statement that you wrote on your piece of paper, I want you to read it three times slowly to yourself. I want you to be seated in a, in a, in a semi, semi-dark room, if you can. This is, you know, optimal environment. I didn't give you any warning of this. So uh, the way you're doing, the way and where you are right now is fine. But when, we, when you start doing this for your repetition for the 28 to 30 days, uh, try to be in a, in a dimly lit room, in a comfortable chair, at a temperature that is comfortable for you, okay? Um, you can leave your hands open, okay? Um, you know, i.e., you don't have to go into the kundalini mudra, but if your kundalini moves you into that mudra, well, that's fine, too. We always pay attention to what the kundalini moves us to do. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. I see. I see that. Okay, very good. Yes, but sometimes choppy, um, easy to follow. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. All right. So... Give yourself the opportunity to sit in a chair that's comfortable. Look at the little message that you've written to yourself using your power by holding that pen or pencil and, and, and engraving that piece of paper. Okay? You've already begun to use power. Now, I want you to, to take a slow, easy inhalation and hold it for about seven seconds. So... If you go ahead and breathe in now, breathe in and 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000. Exhale that energy and feel that lift, that, that energetic rise that came from your breath. Okay, just from taking that breath, you inhaled, you held it for seven seconds, and you exhaled. And in that moment, the prana that you held has been transformed into mana. Okay? This is now mana energy that is within you. Okay? And that brief flash of energy is what you'll use to hand to your lower self, your unihipili self, your ego self, and ask that ego self to shine that energy with the words in the message to the higher self. I know this sounds complex, but it's not, really. This is, this is about as easy and effective power prayer as you can, you can do. Okay? So you inhale. So you read the message. You inhale. You hold the breath for seven seconds with... And focus on what the message is saying, what that, that uh, little uh, message you gave to yourself is saying. Exhale, and you, it's like a J. It's like a J, a capital J. You start at the, the higher functioning consciousness, which is what we're calling the middle self. Middle self puts the body into this breathing repetition. Okay, So the middle self says, okay, I'm going to read this message, and I'm going to inhale, I'm going to hold it for seven seconds, and then you send that energy that you feel on the exhalation to your first self. So the energy is going down to the ego, and the ego is sending that with your visualization and the message that's on the piece of paper to your kundalini. This is helpful because you don't have to have kundalini awakened in order to do this. But you can't do any harm to anyone or yourself or the environment, okay? So just remember that. So as you inhale, hold it for seven seconds, 
send it down to your first self, who sends it all the way up to the higher self, which would be your Kundalini. And Kundalini, and even in the even in the uh, the Huna sense, this is all taken you know, from Max Friedemann's understandings of Huna. Uh, the Huna is also, uh, you know, they also recognize their Kundalini. They call the Kundalini Amakua, A M U A U M A K U A Amakua. So the Amakua is also sacred male and sacred female. So it's just another word for kundalini. Okay, so know that you are in familiar waters with this. Even if you don't have kundalini awakened, if you've listened to any of these conversations, your familiarity with this has been growing. Okay, so you should be in familiar waters with this. And whenever you're hearing this, in the archives or right now, you will be part of this healing uh, equation. So you, so every time you take a breath now, you're going to read that little message that you wrote on the paper. You're going to visualize it. You're going to inhale, hold the breath for seven seconds. And as you exhale, you send that energy to your ego who bounces that energy with your visualization straight up to the kundalini. In this way, all aspects of our human equation are being used in a very specific way. You're not killing or obliterating the ego. The ego is now a partner. It's now a partner in this. And the ego can be seen really as your inner child. And we don't kill our children. We don't, you know, we don't obliterate our children. We 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 teach the child how to do the most appropriate thing. And by and large, the, the, the ego children want to be a part of this equation. They see it as fun, as exciting. Okay, and so your ego, by by the virtue of the fact you're even here listening to this to this uh, to, to these words that I'm saying, your ego is complicit in this healing. It wants to perform this healing. Now, granted, later on, it will want to be known as the great and powerful healer. <laughs> you can make those corrections if and when that time comes. Okay, so we're at the point where we we read the message, we inhale gently and deeply for seven seconds, we exhale, and you'll feel it, actually, you'll put first in your head and then in your chest, and you give that energy to your first self. The ego self is the first self. Okay? The first self will transmit that energy and that message with that energy to the third self, which is the Amakua Kundalini. Okay, the second self is your higher functioning mental conscious self. And just as an aside, for the evolutionary of the soul, the lower self becomes, the, the first self becomes the second self, the second self becomes the third self, okay? And that is the spiritual evolution uh, of of this this type of a belief system. And they've actually, you know, they they've researched Tuna and they find it to be the most psychologically complete uh, belief system in the world. Tuna is very, very powerful. And the Kundalini loves it. Okay. So any questions about that now? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go real slow here because I want people to get this right. So you're reading from the piece of paper. You visualize what it is you're reading. You hold. You you take a deep, easy breath. You hold it for seven seconds. You exhale the the breath slowly so that you can feel that energy come up uh, to the top of your head and your chest and even into your hands a little bit. Okay. And then you give that energy to your first self with the instruction to project it like a movie, to the third self, the Amakua, the Kundalini, okay? 
So I added one little thing. Is I just added into the instruction is to have the, have the first self project it like a movie. You know that the light in front of the film is what allows the picture of the movie to be to appear. You might want to try that as a way to to help the ego self or your inner child project that up. Okay. Any questions at this point uh, from anybody in the uh, chat room? Feel free to ask a question. This is this is all about learning here too. I want you to do this 28 to 30 days. Once you decide on, on how many days, then I want you to follow that through. So if you decide on 30, then I want you to do 30. If you decide on 28, then I want you to do 28. Don't shorten it or, or lengthen it uh, for convenience levels, though. Okay? Do not try to control how your kundalini uses this energy. Once, you, once your first self has given it to the kundalini, then it's gone. And it's for the kundalini to use as the kundalini sees fit. Not your ego and not you, the higher functioning mental consciousness. Once it's given to the kundalini, it stays with the kundalini. And you don't get to have any control over how this prayer uh, is responded to or how any kind of manifestation associated with this prayer is to be given. You and your ego, so the, the first and the second selves, do not get to control what the third self or the kundalini does with this energy. It's very important that you learn to separate yourself from controlling the kundalini. Any questions from the chat group? Waiting, waiting. I don't see anybody typing, so okay. Uh, Mia, uh, Rosemary, I'm going to bring you both on. Any questions that you want to ask? Rosemary? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Are you able to hear me all right? I can. And the only thing, this sound sometimes is warbled that's the, my expression for it but but it it passes it's just like oh, a little wave and then but it's still understandable so thank you very much for for this this is uh very touching uh well yeah this 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 is going to touch this will definitely touch good good amelia no i'm fine with this is our cousin all right taking you off okay so you don't get to control what the kundalini does with this energy that you're giving. You just need to trust and have faith that the kundalini will use it in a way that is most beneficial for all involved. And, and by all, I mean the zooplankton, the phytoplankton, the, the actual consciousness of the water itself, of the land, of the earth, of the radioactivity, all of it will be will be worked with but not in the way that you may wish for or hope for and so just trust that your kundalini your amakua knows exactly what to do with that energy and remember what i said at the beginning that you're going to have little threads of, of mana or mana 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 loa attached to these prayers and it doesn't go away once you attach this power, this mana loa, to the, uh, to the prayer, it stays. You have created a prayer object. And the kundalini will use and consume that prayer object to bring about the healing in whatever way the kundalini wants it to come about. Okay? Let me read to you a little bit more about this. Okay, so I've talked with you about the, the breathing, and we know that taking a slow, deep breath will give us a, uh, an extra amount of energy. And we can use certain combined and specific mental images to accumulate a surcharge, such as uh, visualization or, or reading, reading it 
reading the, the message on the piece of paper is very, very effective because at the same time you read, you're visualizing what it is you're reading in your mind. So not only are you seeing and visualizing in the in the physical, but you're also doing that in the in the higher functioning mental state as well. Um, uh, let's see. The kahuna, the kahuna is like a minister of the huna faith. Um, this here. The kahuna believe that by an action of the mind, a person adds to the amount of mana created from food and air. The extraction process is quickened. Okay. Uh, this theory is supported by our physiologists who have found that when we digest food, it is all, not all used at once, but is changed into blood sugar or into glycogen. Uh, it, the body changes this, this, uh, the power that we use to digest our food. Okay? Uh, the base itself, or what we're calling the unipili or the ego self, tends to all uh, such matters of digestion, uh, automatic heart rate, automatic temperature control, all of these basic uh, structures within the human being are controlled by the first self, our inner child. And as the first self learns to do uh, this easily in most cases, you know, to, to take the power from the breath that we hold for seven seconds, uh, we can always have this power to accomplish whatever we truly and justly need. The accumulation of a surcharge of vital force is accompanied or accomplished, I'm sorry, it's accomplished simply by explaining to the first self, our ego self, just what it is to be done and then asking it to do it and to help the, the first self, we can start by breathing more deeply, adding the thought of accumulating a large surcharge of mana power, and the process begins. Okay, uh, As I mentioned before, the kahuna used the, uh, the symbol of water for mana, and, and when the kahuna wished to accumulate a surcharge, uh, they breathed deeply and visualized mana rising like a water rising in a fountain higher and higher until it overflowed and the, and the body is visualized as a fountain with the water flowing out the top of the head just like the Kundalini. I'm sorry, I got garbled because my, uh, my volume increased on that one. My apologies. Uh, but it is very much like a Kundalini. And, and you know, I will, I will suggest that you use that as a, as a way of seeing yourself while you're making these prayers. Okay, so let's go back. And it looks like everybody, nobody's asked me any more questions. Okay. Uh, let's see what we have. One, two, three. Ten, eleven. That's perfect. Okay. All righty. So I would like everybody to get into a comfortable position. Move around a little bit. Stand up. Shake. Do whatever. We've been we've been talking for almost an hour now. Getting you ready for this. Now, when I look at Fukushima, I look at the earth, the air, the water. Okay. I look at all the mammals, all the invertebrates, all the crustaceans, all the fish. I look at the water itself, the hydrogen the H2O, the two hydrogens and the one oxygen. And I look at that and I, I include that in my healing. Okay, so it's almost like you get a collage of water, air, earth, energy. That's how I'm seeing it. Okay? I trust the Kundalini will not allow me to do anything harmful with this. And because it's the Kundalini that is actually doing the work here, you can rest assured that your Kundalini will work with the energy you give it in a very productive, positive, and helpful way. Okay? This is a great way for you to begin to assimilate your first 
self, your ego self. Okay. And what, what I mean by assimilation is I mean working in partnership with a positive uh, relationship with the uh, with the ego self, your inner child. Okay. This helps the inner child develop the skills and the resources that it needs in order to become a higher mental functioning middle self or second self. And this teaching the teaching the ego uh, or your inner child is also a great resource for your own uh, evolution into the kundalini. Your, you who are higher mental functioning second selves, your next stop is kundalini. If you haven't got it already, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. And believe me, you'll learn more about surrender, you know, when it comes in full. Um, and I don't mean that as a scary way. I just mean it in a way that is, you know, you, you get to really be taught in a in a very hands-on way. My mother, my mother, who is who will probably eventually hear this, so hello, Mom. Uh, she used to grab me by the ear and drag me on over to whatever chore it was <laughs> she was asking me to do and that I was obviously resisting doing. And so she would take me by the ear to indicate that I haven't been listening to her. And if I had been listening, I wasn't hearing what she wanted me to do. So she would take me by the ear and to whatever job I was supposed to be doing for her, and, and uh, that helped me to focus on the job that I was supposed to be doing for her. In the same way, sometimes you may have to take your ego by the ear and uh, and have to do the work that you're intending for it to do. I'm not saying that you have to do that all the time, hopefully not, but uh, for 28 to 30 days, I want you and your child self, your ego self, to participate in this healing for Fukushima. It's very, very important. Fukushima has the possibility of changing our lives in very drastic ways. And, and if you're not looking at a drastic change, uh, then then give, give a healing to the environment, to the air, to the water, to the, to the life forms that are around it. You know, give your love and give your grace, give your power into this healing. So as you're seated, you're comfortable, look at the message, seven seconds. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you right now. I'm going to do it with you. And here we go. Give that to your first self and have the first self project that energy to your kundalini. That is a complete equation. Right there, it's a J. J is for joy. Okay? And now breathe it again and hold it for seven seconds and inhale. One, one thousand. 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000. Exhale, feel the energy in your, in your head and your chest and give it to your first self to shine at the Kundalini. Feel the Kundalini, accept it from your younger self, your ego self, your first self. And the reason why it's called the first self is because it's closest to the first chakra, and it it has a lot of the qualities of the first chakra embedded in its natural expression, such as heartbeat, body temperature, um, you know, security issues. That all of that. That's why it's called the first self. It's also the the most dense self that you have among the the uh, four selves that you are. And the four selves would be the unihipili or the first self, uh, the uhane or the higher mental functioning consciousness.
consciousness and then the male and female of the Kundalini. Let's do it again. Inhale and hold. 1,001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Exhale. Give that energy to your first self and instruct it to shine it like a movie to the Kundalini. And do this continuously now. You don't need to have me count for you. You know, you do this automatically now. Now, there are other Kundalini techniques, and I want you to keep doing this as I talk. Keep breathing. Count to yourself. Give the energy of the exhalation to your first self, your ego self, and ask the ego self or tell it, command it, to shine that message that you're holding in your hands in beautiful lighted letters to the Kundalini. And do this. Now, on a daily basis, you only need to do this for about 15 to 21 minutes. So, that's not very long. That's just that's not even a decent meditation. Okay, but every day for 15 to 21 minutes, do this. But if, you, if, if it's even if that much is too much time for you and your busy schedule to do, then do it for nine minutes. But do it every day because the accumulated energetic threads will hang on to these prayers that you're doing. The power doesn't go away. You've made mana from prana. And that power does not go away. Okay? So connect those threads. It's like weaving a tapestry of healing for Fukushima. You're weaving a tapestry of healing for the earth, for the air, for the water, for the life that is there and is on this planet. This is your chance to make a difference. So make this difference. Make this difference. Okay. Read what you wrote on your little paper. I'm going to repeat this because I see new people are, are signing on. So write down the kind of healing that you want to give to Fukushima. Okay. Write down the healing. Take a nice, easy, deep breath and hold it for seven seconds. Keep looking at the message, maybe, as you hold it in your hand. At the end of seven seconds, exhale the air, but you'll feel the energy. And give that energy to your first self. And give the command to shine that energy to the kundalini through the message so that the letters are lit up with energy. Do this over and over and don't change it up. Don't change the message that you've written. Don't change the technique. Keep it strong. Keep it pure for 28 to 30 days. Now, even just now, what we're doing right now is having immediate effect on the radiation levels that are being pumped into the Pacific right now. I can already see it. Okay. Have confidence in what is occurring here. Trust your higher self. Trust your God, your Kundalini, that it will do what, it, what needs to be done in order to, to materialize your healing upon this planet. Okay? Inhale. Look at the message. Hold for seven seconds. Exhale. Give the energy to your first self with the command to shine that message with the energy to the Kundalini. And do it again and again and again. Over and over and over. And then, after you're done with nine minutes or your 15 minutes or your 21 minutes of doing this, forget about it completely. 
forget about it completely. Go do your work, uh, turn some music on, uh, do some heavy exercise, uh, you know, try as best you can to absolutely forget it. This takes you and your ego out of the way of trying to control how this is done. I see, Elizabeth, you're typing something here. And I'm going to wait for you a little bit here. Uh, EDJ, or G, EDG, Elizabeth, C. Go ahead, and uh, eventually I guess that will reach us here, what you're typing. While she's typing, I want you to go ahead and breathe in again. Hold it for seven seconds. Make sure that you look at the message as you breathe in. Send that energy to the first self or your ego self. Tell the ego self to shine that energy through that message, just like a movie, onto the kundalini and give it to the kundalini completely. Oh, here we are. Because we wrote down today's Today with today's date, do we then change the date each day? If you like, if you like, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, because the threads will still connect, collect, connect the two the two prayer days that you've given. You know, those threads, regardless of what date you're calling it, your what your mind is calling it, those threads automatically intertwine. Okay, so you can you can date it or not. Uh, but if it helps you to keep time of what, what you're doing, then go ahead and date it. Try not to let a day go by that you don't do this. In other words, make a commitment out of this uh, and keep that commitment. And I know, I know, I'm asking a lot of you because, you know, we're coming into the holiday season, the season of giving. Hello, hello, Kuna prayer. <laughs> the season of giving. And and uh, let us give to this world. And if we give to this world, we give to ourselves at the same time. Okay. Really give to this. Don't skip a day. Don't miss a day. You know, if you find yourself in a position where you're not in a dimly lit room or in a comfortable place, if you can just take those nine minutes, wherever you are, seated in your car, you know, just before you pull out of the parking spot you're in, give nine minutes to this Fukushima healing. Really do this because this really works. I have tried it myself. I cannot, and I'm not allowed to give to you on these uh, in these these blog talk radios and on the on the writings that I've, that I've done. I cannot give to you information that I have not tried or experienced myself. Oh, I see. I see how that, I see why it's choppy. Huh. Anyway, do this every day for the next 28 to 30 days. You choose the next 28 to 30 days. And, John, that goes for you, too. John, I want you to do this, too. <laughs> you didn't think I was watching you there, did you? John, as much as you play poker, I want you to do this prayer. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Amelia, you can also teach your son to do this as well. Okay. Any of you with children or spouses that, you know, you can mention the word kundalini too, and they don't get really angry or they don't interrupt you and say, I'll stop talking about them. Any of you that have spouses or, 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 or loved ones who can hear this information, feel free to teach them this information. It's really, it's time that we learn how to, on the West, in the Western techno civilization, it's time we learn how to power pray. And remember, at the end, you take off any expectation, you totally forget as much as you can about what it is you have just done. You go about your day, you go Christmas shopping, you you know, you go into Walmart and you spend like a crazy person. <laughs> Better yet, you go to you go to a, a store that is locally owned and operated, locally owned and operated. And even though they may not have the cheapest things, you know that 
that not only are you helping uh, the person you're buying the gift for, but you're also helping the people who, who are private store owners. You know, it's not going to a big conglomerate. I mean, how much money do the uh, do the do the the children of Sam uh, Sam uh, uh, how much money do they need? <laughs> Come on, keep going with this. Inhale, look at the picture, look at the uh, messages you inhale. Hold for seven seconds. Exhale, feel the energy and give it to your first self with the instruction to project that message you hold in your hands right now to your Kundalini with the power of the mana attached to it. Embrace this really as a way to help solve the problems of the world to help solve your own issues you can use this on yourself although I have to state and Max Freedom Long stated it as well and so did the kahunas if you do it for the benefit of another it works faster so because you're doing this for Fukushima you're not just doing it for Fukushima you're doing it for all life you're doing it for the Japanese people you're doing it for the people in California on the West Coast. You're doing it for the people in the Hawaiian Islands. You're doing it for the people in, in, in any of the Pacific atolls or islands. The radiation is going everywhere. Wherever there's ocean, that radiation is going. So this is a great service to humanity, a beautiful service to all life on this world. For long enough, humanity has been putting out energies that are destructive to this, this planet and this environment. Now, you are being given an opportunity to correct that mistake. You are being given an opportunity to correct that mistake. And if we can lift ourselves out of our... Out of our uh, uh, out of our day-to-day, -day, uh, I'll use the word drudgery, uh, of work, going to work, getting the kids off to school, getting in the car, landing at work, doing work, coming back home, sleeping, doing it all over again, day in, day out, day in, day out. If you can do this gift of a healing every day, day in, day out, you'll make a huge difference in this world. A huge difference. And don't be surprised to see the world start taking greater notice just after this healing that we're doing today, tonight, whatever time it is, wherever you are on this planet. Yeah, you're going to see a great upsurge in interest in Fukushima and what can be done. And you can add your... The Kundalini works in very, very, very strong and, and different ways than what you're expected or what your expectation would be within a five-cent understanding. Uh, the greater uh, attention is also part of the Kundalini's healing uh, of Fukushima for this planet because people need to know the error of their ways. They need to learn from these errors. And part of what you're doing is showing divinity that you have indeed learned the error of, of, of these ways. That, you know, you don't get to have cheap energy uh, uh, at the cost of the environment. You know, it, it, the environment needs to come first. Cheap energy, a far distant second. Okay. And you don't expect to have total and complete control over the environment. Matter of fact, you get very little control over the environment. You can manifest ways that will allow the environment to nurture you just as much as, as it has been, but even more so. You know, the only reason we have nuclear power stations is because we've chosen not to 
to take solar or wind or wave energy, any of the other many, many options that have been given to us. We chose nuclear because it's easy and you can charge for it. I mean, look at a nuclear power station. It's it's fuel rods that are that are compacted rods of uranium. I don't know if it's 238 or whatever it is, whatever the number is. And they're all, you know, they, they're put into one uh, centralized area. The water is pumped around them to cool it. Well, they boil the water because they're so hot. And that, that boiling water is what produces the, 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 the turbines, the energy that the turbines use to develop electricity. It's very easy. Very easy to do. It's just not so easy to take care of because eventually those fuel rods are going to have to be put somewhere. Okay. So by doing this healing on Fukushima right now, we're doing a healing really on the whole idea of nuclear energy. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not putting any kind of a judgment on it. I'm just saying it's, you know, within an earthquake or a tsunami, well, you know, those little pathetic structures that we put around these extremely hot uh, uh, nuclear rods, you know, they're not going to hold. They're going to have problems like, like, our, like, like are happening right now in Fukushima, but also happened in Chernobyl. Let's not forget Chernobyl here. Okay. Keep breathing. Keep doing this. Let me know of any difficulty that any of you may be having right now. Should our eyes be closed after we read it or visualize, visualize the words? You can choose whether to, to, to close your eyes or not. Um, try not to control so much. I mean, I know what you're saying. I mean, uh, when I close my eyes, I automatically see the words all lit up with energy. And so... Uh, if you're seeing that, then just, yeah, just give it to your first self and uh, and go that way. Now, now, if you're in a position where you can have your eyes closed, then do it that way. You know, you read it, close your eyes, do the breathing, and then give it and, and, and give it to the first self. And then, the, you know, with the command, shine this as energy and request to the uh, Amakua or the Kundalini. Amakua and Kundalini are really the same things. It's the same things. And uh, just life here is really amazing in its intricacies. Just amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, I will ask my dog to duplicate my efforts as well. No, 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 no. No, I don't think so. I know you're, you're, you're being, uh, I hope you're being humorous with that. Uh, no. Uh, so, so yeah, take this very, very seriously. This is not just something that you, you know, this isn't a cartoon uh, type of uh, of uh, technique. This this technique has been used for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This is a technique that's been hidden from the people of the West because the people of the West needed to have the experience of being dominated by people from the West. <laughs> so we're, we're starting to break out of that. Okay. Let this be the start of you breaking out of that. Okay. Now I can, I can get into more of the, uh, of, of, of the Huna. But I just want you to get this very, very simple technique down. And so what Lauren, what Lauren wrote was, was very, very, that's, that's an excellent question. Should we keep our eyes open or closed? Well, keep your eyes open or closed. You choose, but once you choose, let that be the decision that you've made for this entire 28 to 30 days. Okay? And don't forget to make your separation. What that is, is, is that's forgetting about it, getting, taking yourself out of the way, out of the expectation. Well, I did a, I did a healing, therefore it, I, better, I better look at the news about Fukushima to see what happened. <laughs> Take that out. All that's going to do is get in the way of the transmission between yourself, your ego, 
and your and your kundalini. Make your separations. So at the end of the nine, fifteen, or twenty-one minutes, you do something absolutely different from from sitting. You do something absolutely different from breathing in a gentle way. You do something absolutely different from anything that you were doing with the uh, first self and the third self, the kundalini self. So if you're just sitting there, let me use uh, Fasci because he wants his dog to be a part of this. And so, okay. So the best way for the dog to be a part of this is as Fasci is sitting there in his chair and he's, He's got the message in his hand, and he's looking at that message. And we'll just say Fashi closes his eyes, and he sees the message. He's holding his breath for seven minutes, collecting that energy, changing it from prana to mana. And then he exhales, and he feels that energy, and he gives that energy to the first self, the ego self, with the instruction to, to project it with this energy to amakua or kundalini, and he does this for 21 minutes. And then he immediately gets up. He thanks the kundalini. He thanks the first self. And he takes the dog for a walk or a run, a nice joggy walk, maybe, you know. So the dog is part of it. The dog is part of his separation sequence, okay. And this, I think, would work very well. So if you have small children at home, well, then go out and do something with the kids. Okay, if you're a single person, go out and, and, and go see a movie. In, in a way, you can kind of like see how that might be projecting to the uh, Amakua. But do something radically different than what you were doing uh, as, as you were giving the prayer. Okay, now I'm going to open this up to questions. You can call in here. Uh, the area code is uh, United States, area code 347. So for... For those of you calling from outside the uh, the United States, you can dial zero zero one, and then three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Um, I'll I'll stay uh, on for a little while just to see if anybody is going to call. Um, I'm going to bring Amelia on right now, Amelia. So get ready, Amelia, to come on. Here you go. There you are. Hi, Amelia. Hi, boss. <laughs> Hi, cousin. Hello. Have you been um, able to follow this? Yes, I have. I'm I'm a little bit familiar with it, having having read something of Max Freedom long before, and also the Lomi Lomi Massage is a Hawaiian. Um, Thing. I'm, I'm familiar with it, so yes, I've been able to follow it. But your explanation has been quite clear, anyway, for people listening to it for the first time. I think. Do you well, know what I'd love to do, Prism? I wonder if it's possible. Um, would we be able to give, at some stage before you finish, five, seven minutes of us just doing this together without oh, yeah. any Great talk? Idea. Let's do that right now. I have. Could we, could we, like, could we play? How do we do that if there's silence? Would we play music, or I just have the Ascension CD here, but I don't know if that's appropriate or not. Oh. If it's silent, no, I don't want. People the, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't want the music to dis, to okay. distract people, and it might distract yes. people. I can just. I can just give people a, a you know, a, a notice. Okay. Okay, everybody. Everybody, I'm going to put you on hold there, Amelia. Okay. Okay, everybody, then this is great. This is a great idea from Amelia, and let's go ahead and do this. So we have approximately 13, about 13 or 14 people right now on, on the chat that we're able to see. I understand that, that uh, Blog Talk doesn't really give you a full listing of who all's here. Um, so we're going to take, uh, at 425, we're going to take, uh, seven minutes and we will do, be doing all of us, myself included, we will be doing this for seven minutes 
and I will I will wake you up, so to speak, from the seven minutes that we're doing this. Okay. So do we have any? Every well, I guess if everybody's ready, let's go ahead. And I, I got 4:23 now, so I want you to all get ready, get yourself situated, get your little message written out about how you'd like to see Fukushima healed. Have the opportunity, turn the lights down a little bit. See if you can be alone with this, if you can. If you can't, that's okay, too. Get ready to uh, to do some breathing. Get yourself focused and relaxed and say hello. You won't hear this from me too often. You know, say hello to your ego self. This is your first self. And say hello to yourself, your higher mental functioning self. And tell the ego that you send a hello and salutations to the Kundalini through it, through the ego self. And as you do that, Settle back into your chair. Look at your message and begin. Okay, everyone. Gently, gently come back. Gently come back. Open your eyes if you've had them closed. Open your eyes and release yourself from what it is you have just done. Recognize what it is you have just done. Write everything down. Listen to this program again if you need to. But do this every day for the next 28 to 30 days. Every day. Try to do it at the same time every day. Try to do it with the same level of food in your stomach every day. Try to replicate what you've just done right now, every day for the next 28 to 30 days. Okay? Do this. Now, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call United States Area Code 347-934- 934-0026. So that's 347-934-0026. And Amelia, I'm bringing you on. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. That was a great idea, too. That was the whole reason for doing this. So very, very good. Now, for the next 28 days, 28 to 30 days, Regardless of where we are on this world, on this globe, we can do this and still be connected by the threads of energy that we have developed today, tonight, whatever time it is uh, with, with any of you that are listening to this, including those who listen on the archives, because your energetic threads will tie in with ours. Now, Amelia, do you have any questions that you think people might ask? Um, no, Chris, let me see. Ask John if he has any questions. Doing that now, two seconds. Hi, Chris. He doesn't yeah. have any questions, but he was he wasn't fully doing it really. He's been listening, but he didn't participate because he was, as you said, playing poker. <laughs> but he is going to he <laughs> he is going to um, do it all right after today every day. Okay, all right. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and like- actually, I will also I will also um, include Jonathan in this. Okay, and uh, my son, as you suggested, yes. 
I think it's it's a very good thing that we could do together, you know, that he could do and learn. And Rosemary, how how has it been going for you? This is uh, good, Chris, and, and thank you, Amelia, thank you. for the for that suggestion. My my question my, my, is practical is thing practical. of where my thoughts are. I can just do like one of these things at once, like if I'm counting. So if I I was reading my prayer first, and then the then the the count of to the seven seconds, and then letting it go and asking the ego to take it to my kundalini. So when I'm doing my intention and my prayer, is that like before the seven seconds and holding my breath before that, or that's just normal breathing? You 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 read the message, okay. You read it once, then you inhale. You hold for seven seconds, and then you send the energy that you developed uh, to the to the first self or the ego self with mm-hmm. the instruction with the instruction mm-hmm. to shine it like a projection onto the kundalini or the amakua. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. That was you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and let's see here. There, and like there's a few, and then for me there would be a few breaths at that time. You know, it's um, there's a couple of breaths, and then it's back into it again. And for me, I opened and closed my eyes this time because I wanted to read the words. So I for read those, the words. For those that have the, the the Kundalini already awake, you can literally feel the energy collecting. Over the yes. top of your head. Did you, Amelia? Amelia? Yes, I absolutely did, and therefore, yeah. yes, I did, I did, and so the breath thing went then, and then I came back and did that in a conscious way. But then once, once it's given, I don't know what the, happened. You know, I wasn't then consciously breathing. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, once it's given, once once it's given, it's gone. Don't try to follow it. It's gone. Yeah, exactly. It's gone. And then uh, then you just go back and you breathe again, but you don't try to follow it. You don't try to attach to it. No. But also, it's not... Can you put on your headphones, please? Yeah, because we're getting a kind of a repeat here. You you don't attach to, and that's going to be the hard thing because your ego is going to want to find out what's under the Christmas tree, <laughs> and you don't you don't get to know the gift that is being given to Fukushima. You may you know in the longer in the longer view you may get to know, but uh, in the short view no you don't get to uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Dalton, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, go to class. Have a great class, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. And um, looks like uh, we've got about 21 minutes left for anybody who would like to call in. Um, so the area code again, the United States is area code 347-934-0026. Feel free to call in. Amelia is off trying to find her headphones, I'm sure. And uh, and so, yeah, and so we'll give her a chance to to do that. Now, you you can do this for yourself. You can do this for more money. You can do this for a new house. You can do this for a new car. You can do this for a new job. You can do this for you, too. This isn't all about just giving to to somebody else, unless, of course, you have other instructions like I have from the Kundalini. Um, you can do this for yourself, and so I want to encourage you to do this for yourself. If you've got an ailing spouse or a spouse that's having, uh, you know, issues of a, of a energetic or health nature, do this for them. Teach them how to do this for themselves. It's really a powerful, strong, strong prayer, and it is the way that the uh, that the early peoples, the early people knew about prana and, and mana, all 
of these things. It's just that we, in our technologically advanced society, we we don't have that information in our current expression, and except now, now we have it. And I would like to put out a thank you to Max Freedom Long, even though he has passed. I'd like to put out a thank you to him and to the uh, to the Kahunas of the uh, early 19th century. Uh, to you know, they're the ones that taught him. Now you won't you won't find this information at Kahuna.com or or Huna.com or any of this stuff. All of these folks are really they they've turned it into kind of a reiki thing where you pay them a whole bunch of money and then they'll show you how to be a Kahuna. Or they'll show you how to work with with Huna. The only person that I will suggest, and this is the only person that I will suggest you pay attention to, is Max Freedom Long. Not the people that he left his books and write to. Those are the people, the ones that have turned into a commercial operation. Okay. You just read Max Freedom Long's words. Those are the words that I will suggest that you trust. He's passed. Okay. He's passed. But, uh, there's a presence there within his words. He's a good teacher of Huna. Okay, and he doesn't come at it, you know, from the from the racial problems that they're having in Hawaii right now. You know, there's all kinds of racial unrest and and and, pro, and right so I'm sure. <coughs> so, you know, with regards to to uh, present day modern Huna or Kahuna, I don't recommend any of them. I don't recommend a single one. Your kundalini and the the information that Max Riemann put down should work well with your kundalini. Take that as the as the as the gospel truth. Okay, nobody that's got any other kind of an agenda, whether it's through recognition or what it is, you know, don't accept their words on this unless they're paraphrasing or not paraphrasing unless they're repeating you know almost verbatim uh, uh, Max Freedom Long okay uh, hello hello Hi. nice to see ah Fashji how are you and how is your dog <laughs> well as, as to be expected I just wanted to um uh, point out something that uh, occurred to me as I uh, was uh, practicing uh, along with uh, the rest of the uh, folk here. I'm, I'm going to try to mute myself here. Um, this is an excellent uh, example of the safeties in this selfless service to others and I thought it was just a, a, a perfect thing to to bring out uh, that uh, this is a way in which we can um, serve others as a part of uh, the safeties this this particular practice because it's not for us uh, or yet and yet it is because. Uh, we're on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, but um, I thought that it was something that I wanted to say uh, as far as service. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful example of, of incorporating this into the selfless service part of the, uh, the practice. And I wanted to pass that by you and see what you thought. No, no, I, I I agree, and and it is for us too because we're on the planet. Uh, but but it is it is it is a very it's it's a very good way to give selfless service. Now, it doesn't take away from the actions of of buying somebody a lunch, you know, or or or, or letting somebody cut in front of you on the freeway, or go ahead of you in the line, or, or you know. Any of right. the many, many, many little things that we do for others, this doesn't replace that. This is, no. is in, in conjunction with that. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going with this. Uh, Julie and, and Amelia have created uh, uh, pages on Facebook that allow us to to collect large groups of people. I want to collect a bunch of Japanese people. I have one Japanese student on the uh, Yahoo, uh, and I'm going to talk to her about uh, getting some more uh, Japanese people involved. I'm sure they're so frustrated that they're, you know, trying to figure out all different kinds of ways to work on their own island and to, and to take care of this in their own way, and I think this would be a very helpful way for them to do that for themselves as well. I agree. Well, that's yeah. uh, that's pretty much it, and uh, a bit about my, my, my dog is uh, he's been actively participating in meditation for over two years now. And, well, there you um, go. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's and good. you know, animals have so little of uh, ego in their, their lives and their consciousness that I thought it might be um, yes. something that, that that was useful. And it, it, it wasn't it wasn't meant to to be uh, a joke or anything like that. Well, uh, I'm sure uh, you. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I'm sure your dog knows, and, and, and as does Lasha. She knows the kind of work I do, and so I'm sure your dog knows the kind of work you do too. So absolutely, no okay, absolutely. And thank absolutely. you for calling in, Fosti. Thank you. And thank much. you for having me. Thank you. All right. There we go, and there you go. And your, did you find your headphones, Amelia? I have my headphones on all the time, Cruzan. Oh, I wonder why I was hearing that echo. Weird. Anyway, okay, so I'm about ready to wrap this up. Do you have anything that you'd like to say before we go? No, no, nothing. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you, Amelia, for co-hosting. And uh, and I'll talk with you a little bit after we uh, finish up here. And... Everyone, uh, Celestial Rubies, Fasci, Guest 1702, uh, Guest 1733, 1795, 1834, 58, Sigrid, Tim Ashworth, thank you all for joining me in this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening System. And, and remember, for those of you that have awakened Kundalini, you can actually feel the deposit of the energy about maybe six to, to ten inches above the top of your head. Okay. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, those in the archives, uh, for joining with us. Thank you, uh, Glenn Ola and Eileen Loro and uh, John O'Connor, Amelia Sunt, uh, Sigrid and Tim and Julie and everybody. As I mentioned before, I'll be, I'm going to be collecting different groups of people, and I'll be doing this again and again and again. So if you're interested in participating in those groups, then we'll go ahead and do that too. Thank you all for joining.